It's six o'clock, and we will call this meeting of the Nicolau City Council <coughs> order. Welcome all of the ones of you there in the audience, mm -hmm. council, and the administration. And with that, we'll have a roll call. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grill? Yes. Councilman Bond? Here. Councilman Shammy? Here. Councilwoman Wright? Here. Councilman Lindsay? Here. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Here. Seven members present. And the invocation will be by Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Thank you for the beautiful weather. Thank you for this meeting, Father. Please let thy perfect will be done. Bless our troops. Bless our first responders and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> and with that, I guess we'll uh, <clears throat> okay the regular session of 9 3 uh, until time. next month. Yep. Okay. And with that, communications from Matt Mills. Good evening, everybody. Um, thanks once again for having me. Again, I know that you guys are trying to do city business, and the last thing you guys need is somebody to take up more time, but this does impact the city. Um, so just like with the Comes to Local Schools, I appreciate you letting me come before you to speak about Clark County, or Springfield Clark County, Career Technical Center, CTC, formerly known as JVS. Uh, Michelle Patrick is also in the audience tonight, the superintendent for CTC. Um, so she's going to help me out with any questions you may have at the end. Um, but we'll just go into, do you need my name and address for the minutes? I believe I have yours memorized. Okay, that's good. You're good. <laughs> so real quick before we get started, I do just want to point this out. If you see this sign around the area, this is for Clark County CTC. It's JVS. However, we've got new ones, a little, a little easier this time. Better. If anybody would like a sign, I've got enough for every council member and maybe a couple of city administrators that live in the area in my car. I'd be happy to give you one. <coughs> just let me know. So um, we're just going to go over CTC, kind of the history of it real quick, and then we're going to talk about the bond slash levy, operating levy issue that's on the ballot in November. Um, again, this would be new money. That's to build new buildings and then to also operate it but we'll go into that here in a little bit. Maybe. Oh, no. Is it, has it got an on button? It does. And it's currently off. That's why it does. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is CTC? So CTC, it is for... Um, junior and senior students so these aren't adults these are still students and it's a it's a program that's been around for a long time we'll go into that a little bit that basically allows for um, job readiness um, it allows for students to enter the workforce as soon as they graduate with certain certifications and whatever program that they do um, at for free, like they do that without debt so they graduate have these certifications um, and they can go right into the workforce, or if they so choose, they can also go directly into college. Um, there are some programs that CTC offers that are kind of college prep, college ready, some engineering programs, um, other programs associated with that. But that is what CTC does, formerly known as GDS. It pulls from all of the Clark County public schools. There's eight of them. I'm not going to name all of them. Tecumseh just so happens to be one. There's also some private organizations or private schools that um, CTC services as well. Um, but that, that's what it does. Um, and that's what, who I am on the Tecumseh Local Schools Board of Education representative to CTC. And um, so they've been doing that for a long time. Um, in fact, I think that they're probably the oldest one in the state of Ohio. Um, and you'll see some of the buildings that were first built and kind of the reason for the levy and the, uh, the reason for um, 
uh, why CTC is asking for it and some of the reasons why they're asking for it because it's greatly needed. So here's a quick glimpse at the history of CTC. Um, so workforce development first began in 1828, but CTC itself was not born until uh, 1964. Am I right on that? 1964. So when it was first built, there were 14 programs and eight career paths. Um, you know, so some of those first buildings were built in 1964. Um, and then additional buildings were added in 1971, 77, 67, 91, and then, <clears throat> not 91, I'm sorry, 1971 and then 1973. So it's not like um, some of the school buildings that you have or some of the other CTC or, or tech centers that you see that are just one big encompassing <coughs> building. This is um, seven or eight buildings spread throughout that were built at different times that house not only academic classes, but as well as um, career technical labs as well. Um, so when those buildings were built uh, back in the 60s, construction standards weren't the same as they are today. Um, one of the big challenges that these buildings prevent, and right, wrong, or indifferent, I wasn't here in the 60s. Some of you were, some of you weren't. Um, but it was probably a poor choice on how they were built. Essentially, there's no building envelope around any of these buildings, so moisture is constantly getting in, and there's constantly, you know, um, uh, infiltration, and there's always repairs and, and um, renovations that have to happen to kind of get this moisture damage out. And even at this point in time, if you were to try and take the existing buildings and put an envelope around them, it's cost prohibitive. It's going to be cheaper just to knock the thing down and build something new. So that's one of the underlying reasons why a new building's need it. It's just the age and the original design of these buildings back in the 60s and 70s was not necessarily the best design that could have been done. I think it was standard practice back then. I think you'll find a lot of buildings around that time period have those same defects. But in today's world and with the cost of <clears throat> repair and you know everything's about keeping mold and moisture out of your building. You know, you don't want that stuff growing in because it's a health risk. These buildings just aren't very great for that. Again, nobody here or nobody there today was involved in that decision. It's just something that they have to live with. So how has CTC grown um, since it was originally built? Um, so again, the last building was built in 1973. Um, we've, they've renovated uh, building D as well as E. Uh, they've renovated EEAD expands. Uh, they've added the vet science and welding uh, program expansions. They also um, added criminal justice career kits to start to be developed. And what the career kits are, uh, what CTC does is it takes um, and it develops these little kits for um, grade school kids, so elementary school kids for all the public schools. And they basically take them and they develop these and they give them to the students to say, hey, Here's some pretty cool career tech stuff that you can do, that you can start to get involved with. So that program was recently added. But in total now, there's 23 programs. I've given you a list of all those programs. And actually, let me, let me go grab that real quick. What CTC offers today. So you can see on here, applied engineering, auto body, auto service, auto tech, carpentry. <laughs> Um, commercial graphic arts, cosmetology, culinary arts, cybersecurity, dental assistant, di uh, digital media, uh, edX, electrical trades, EMT, engineering and architectural design, forestry, heating and air, job training, medical assistant, nurse assistant, software programming, veterinary science, and welding. I can't think of a single thing on this list that's not useful. Um, th these are jobs that we need. These are high paying jobs. These are um, skill-based jobs that just aren't being offered um, at public schools in general. Um, it, these provide pathways for students to go right into the workforce, and it's also providing a um, replacement or pushing students into the direction of career tech to replace the aging workforce. Um, I know me specifically, I, I've kind of got a soft spot for CTC. I did not go. I regret not going. But the industry that I'm in, in construction, we have a uh, ep epidemic of labor shortages. So we've just got people that are really experienced about ready to retire, or young kids coming in, nobody in the middle. 
the recession pretty much drove all those people out of the industry. And so um, all of that experience and all that um, expertise kind of went away. And so CTC is helping fill that gap, getting these young kids um, educated in the different trades that they offer and getting them directly into the workforce. So at least for me on a professional level, it's extremely helpful to have. I'm sure that there's other um, industries, um, auto, um, engineering, everything along those lines that they really are helping with. But that's, that's really what CTC has to offer. You know, it's making these kids career ready from day one. Go ahead. Can I ask you a question? Yes. I understand everything on here that you read off except for Ed X. What is that? I will let Mrs. Patrick <laughs> explain that real quick. Yeah, so we did used to have an early childhood education program, um, and we shifted that over to an education exploration to go from serving the, the young people from birth to grade three. The education exploration allows us to essentially provide our own industry and education. So now our students are getting experience in pre-K to grades 12 to go into okay. the education path. Okay, because that's the only one I didn't understand, yeah, and it's kind of relatively new, I would assume. Yeah, this will be our first full graduating class. Oh. They started last year. And I was correct. Oh. So. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Good question. So ADA and accessibility, why is this on here? Well, it's one of the other reasons why we need new buildings. Um, if you look at the campus or the last time that you were out there, you'll see, and we've got a screenshot of what the overall campus looks like. And I could be off by a couple of feet, but there is a 50-foot elevation change from one side of campus to the other. Kids have to go outside, up ramps, upstairs. There's no real easy, accessible way around this campus. So it's, it's highly impactful for those students or for those individuals that do need ADA compliance. Um, given the current campus layout and the cur current buildings, it's just not really economically feasible to try and throw all that at it. So that's one of the other reasons why we're really looking to get new buildings is to help solve this ADA and to offer services to additional students who otherwise would be impacted by the lack of that. So there you go, there's the campus. Um, you can see um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight buildings that students will actually be in. Um, and then all the outhouses house some of the labs as well as just storage space. So from a, a security standpoint, it's not the best setup. I mean, there's key fobs and doors lock, and I can't go into all those specifics because, you know, if we did, then it would get out there and the buildings wouldn't be safe anymore. But it is a safety concern um, having this sprawling of a campus and having so many doors in and out. So that's another reason why um, the district is looking to build new buildings. Another question, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, you speaking of security, is there uh, uh, security officers on duty, uh, deputies or private security or something in every building or just one that roams? There is a security resource officer. Um, I don't know, Michelle, if you want to add any specifics to that or not. No, yeah, he roams throughout. He that roams. Entire so you have just one? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll ask a question too. Are the buildings all going to be hooked together and placed beside this building, or is it going to be somewhere else, or you haven't got there yet? I will get there. Okay, sorry. I will get there. So there have been challenges at C CTC. Um, if you go through here, you'll kind of look, and you'll see all the different programs, and then if you go to the next page of this, this document here, I'm sorry, um, it gives the total number of students and then where they're coming from. Um, CTC had to turn away 200 students this calendar school year who wanted to go. Why? Because there wasn't space. There are 200 students who could not go, some of them that live in this city because there was no space. So um, uh, CTC got creative and they developed and restructured things. There's, um, a, it's called block scheduling to where they've kind of stacked things up that allow more students to go. Um, and it's been a success, but it's still not enough. You know, there's Clearly, you know, a quarter of the students, there's 25% of the students, or I'm sorry, 20% of the students that applied this year that couldn't go. You know, there's a thousand that want to go, but there's only a spot for 800. So those are some of the challenges that we have. And that's one of the other reasons for the new building ask is that we don't have the space in the current building. Actually, I think that we're getting ready to add maybe an electric vehicle lab and we're going to take over the facility director's office to do that. <laughs> So we have staff giving up space to help with these programs, and you can only do that for so long. Yes, sir. What's the capacity right now? 
percent. Um, right around eight hundred and thirty ish. Yeah, we're right around eight hundred forty-five. Okay. Um, in our incoming class, but of course, be dependent upon the number that's returning as seniors. Okay. And a new building, or we're still in concepts with that, but it will help with. It also depends on how much money the state gives us, and we're going to get into that more. But sure. it will cut that two hundred number of rejections down quite a bit. Awesome. So again, safety and security, it's a challenge. ADA, it's a challenge. Unauthorized, um, undersized classroom enrollment. We don't have the space for these kids that want to go. Plus the classrooms themselves are very small. Uh, I think the state average, um, Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, I think uh, about 1,500 square foot is the state average and ours are right around nine. So the um, Ohio School Design Manual for an academic classroom is 900 plus or minus 10% our average around 500 to okay. 550 uh, for the academic. Um, and then our specs for our labs, they vary based on the uh, industry type. If I remember correctly, when they put JVS up, it was the small size um, classrooms were the thing. That was why, mm -hmm. one of the reasons of the big push because the kids would get more attention. But another thing is the kids that are now dropping out of school, if they had the ability to go to, what, CTS, is that right? CTC. CTC, then maybe we would have some less drops, dropouts, you know? And I agree with that, and that is 100% true, but you'll also find nowadays that it's not just students who are going there as a last chance. I mean, these are kids that are valedictorian, salutatorians at the top of their class who recognize, hey, I'm smart, I'm talented, mm -hmm. college isn't for me, I want to go into the workforce. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's not just, both. it's both. It truly is both. Good. Again, like I said, I wish I would have went. Um, undersized labs and kitchens, um, based upon what you're seeing now, today. Um, no space for assemblies, so there's no big main auditorium that to get these kids in to kind of go over public announcements and things of that nature. Again, that just wasn't considered back in the day when these buildings were built, but that's lacking at this facility. And then the age of the buildings. I mean, they're, they were built in the 60s and 70s. Um, it is the oldest CTC in the state of Ohio, the oldest buildings, period. Um, there have been successes to some of these. Uh, they did install key cards, signage. There's a, a senior res or a security resource officer. Um, annual plans, drills. Um, they've modified traffic patterns to try and help with some of the safety concerns. Uh, they have a compliance by accommodations as needed, so it's not one size fit out fit all. If they have a student, they accommodate them, but it, it's it's really more of as a you know as needed basis for ADA. Block schedule I already talked about. Um, lunches. Um, they use the uh, the lunch room best that they can for assemblies. And it's not a huge lunch room, but that's that's the biggest space that they have available for 800 students. Um, and then, it, yes, sir. Can they put 800 students in that lunch room at one time, or do they break it up into three or four assemblies to to get whatever they want to say out? And I'm watching her. She, she's answering the questions. <laughs> as I'm talking. So I'm thinking of new questions to ask if I can throw her off. But the, apparently, they run several assemblies to get all the students in. And, and because it isn't big enough, mostly it's for safety concerns also. Yes. Uh, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> and then innovative scheduling. You know, just trying to schedule in such a way that gets as many students here as possible, thinking outside the box. Um, and one other thing, I mean, we we're just talking about this. I don't know if you guys know what an absorber chiller is. Uh, mm -hmm. CTC has an absorber chiller. There may be five in the whole Miami Valley that use um, absorber chillers. CTC just happens to be one of them. They are expensive. They make sense if you have high electric costs. I think this one was a donation from Miami Valley, or from Mercy Hospital, is that correct? Years and years. Years and years ago. So it's a really old chiller, hard to find parts. So um, roofs are really hard to maintain. I think we just spent 100,000 plus on not a new roof, roof repairs just to get us going this year. And then, um, so there, there's a lot of cost associated with just maintaining these buildings. You know, the older they get, the more expensive it is. Um, and eventually the cost to maintain is gonna outweigh the means to build new. 
maybe. All right, so if you look behind you, you can kind of see some classrooms uh, sizes. Um, again, academic classroom, 540 square feet. Um, 900 is um, the standard. And then, uh, um, you know, another one at 572, where again, 900 is the standard. So they're very small. Uh, lab space, um, so 1,229 1220, uh, square feet between two spaces. So 1,200 is the recommend, recommendation. So you have two labs using the same space. <coughs> that's how that's gotten kind of um, um, innovative with scheduling and trying to, you know, use as much space as possible. Unfortunately, though, when you do that, you can't get all the equipment in there that you'd otherwise would like to have in your lab. I mean, I, I toured CTC back in January, the whole school, when I got appointed to the board, they've got some great stuff, but it'd be awful nice to get some more stuff that, you know, can prepare these kids, you know, better for the future. Current challenges, some more pictures of just what the buildings look like. So water is not our friend, leaks constantly. Um, you can kind of see where you've got some standards <coughs> on the exterior uh, brick just because the lack of a, a building envelope and the steel lentils for the brick are starting to rust out and get old. Um, today, these buildings would never be able to meet energy code. That's important to some people, some people not. Um, but the leakier your building is, the more expensive it is to heat and cool it, the more expensive it is to maintain it. So newer buildings will help with operating costs down the road. Again, more building envelope pictures. I, I implore you to look at those behind there. I mean, that's just con or concrete uh, failures with the roofing system and then, you know, block wall, masonry, water infiltration and starting to fail. Yes. This, this is true. I, the last time I was there was like 15, 16 years ago, and you could see that even then. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked. I, I couldn't believe there was like a, wasn't really a tunnel, but it was a low spot, and it was all over. I was just really, so it's time. I do believe it's time. I got to give credit where credit's due. The, the facilities team there does a great job maintaining the buildings with what they have available. <clears throat> but expertise can only go so far. Yes, go ahead. Um, have you guys done mold remediation? Because with this amount of leakage, there's probably hidden mold. Um, I'm going to, I would love to speak with you after the meeting, but um, I, I can't speak on that currently. That's fair. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so what about this levy, this bond issue? Um, that's kind of why we're here. Talked about the reasons. Now, what is it? Um, it will be on the 2024 ballot. Um, last time CTC ever got any new money for operations was in 2001. And this will be the third time that CTC has gone out for passing this um, levy for the new buildings um, in a calendar year. Um, they were approached by the state of Ohio um, last year and uh, CTC scrambled, got it on the ballot, didn't have much time to prepare or tell anybody about it. Let me backtrack, I'm sorry. The state of Ohio is offering Clark County CTC 60% um, of the funds to build the new building. That's roughly $39 million. Um, there's a time limit associated with that. Um, it's just about a year, and we're going to be approaching that year this November, so this will be the last time that um, CTC has a chance to get that money from the state. The state of Ohio is going to give that money to another CTC program if it doesn't give it here. So um, the chance to get that money will come back around, but there's 88 or 87 other counties in Ohio that are going to get it first. So it could be some time before this um, gets thrown back in front of the voters again. Um, so that's kind of the reason why, I mean, when the state's going to pay for 60% of it, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, we need new buildings, that's clear. Um, if this doesn't pass, we're going to ask again in the future to build a new building. Why not take advantage of the money that's available and save the residents of Clark County and New Carlisle some money in the long run? Yes, sir. What's the total cost as projected for this building? I think it's right around $65 million, is that right? Give or take, or we're still trying to finalize that. Yeah, we're still sussing it out. But the the one thing that just changed, do you do you want to talk about that pie chart? Oh, no. I can, unless you want to talk about it a little bit more. The the way that the bond is written this time, mm -hmm. it does generate more dollars for mm -hmm. us, which okay. kicks 
the total portion of the estate giving to us a little bit lower. That's uh, right. B60, see the green up there is mm -hmm. the state's portion. The dark blue on the bottom is our portion if we only replace the exact same square footage that sits on our property right now. Well, that'd be stupid. It would be. So <laughs> I was that just saying. The blue over there is local funded. Um, that is also wrapped up in that 1.4 mils. And that gives us um, another $8 million beyond even what we were asking for in, in the past because we are now looking at a 37-year endpoint to the bond instead of having in perpetuity for the full 1.4 um, percent. So it's 9.96% at 37 years is the bond. The rest of it is permanent improvement okay. so that would maintain the life of the building. The total cost, you asked me Just to a guesstimate. That, uh, 65, 70 million? No, I wanted to say it was going to be 89 million. 89 million. 89 million. That, that, that changed since the last time. Plus, right. Yeah. That's right. So, um, <clears throat> and if I'm, if I may, sir, yes, I like to ask Grant. You might know the question. Yeah. Uh, how big of a building are you planning on building? Are you going to try to accommodate a thousand students for the future instead of just building for eight or nine hundred now? Because yeah, so, you, know, yeah. you know, there's a lot of new developments in this county, and and I don't know what. You know, I assume it's just Clark County that goes to the CTC, so. You know, it, it, if you're only going to build for eight or nine hundred or nine or a thousand students, that's kind of a waste. Yes, yeah, so our current <laughs> square footage across those buildings right. is 182,000 square feet. We're building this right here allows for 210,000 square feet plus the other eight million. So where where we're going to put that extra square footage it still has to be sussed out. We have sort of a concept that okay. Mr. Mills will go over with you. The answer to the question over here earlier is. If we had this new building now, we would have turned away those students. Um, and Mr. Mills has sort of demonstrated that we have the, the creative minds to think differently about how we deliver the educational space. And he's going to show you that our data shows we do a really good job. The, the students perform um, and they, they go on and they make money while they're even still students. So I, an actual capacity, I don't have that number. I know it's well over 1,100. Oh, okay. um, plus, we we have this. We're notorious for getting creative with time and space, and making sure that as many students can come to us can come to us. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Do that much better than I could. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad you came. Thank you very much. I apologize. Oh, you're fine. No, the, all good I questions, and, question and, wrong thing, and it's, it's good stuff. I'm running out of paper here. Um, so just some histories on what tried to happen. So originally it was a continuing levy, not a bond issue that was put on the November 2023 ballot. Nobody knew what it was because nobody knows what CTC is. Everybody knows what JVS is, but a name change was done decades ago. And so now it's, it's CTC. 30 years ago. So um, it didn't pass because there wasn't enough recognition out there. So it got put on the March 2024 ballot and it almost passed, but not quite. Um, and the main feedback that the uh, Board of Education got and the administration at CTC is that, well, we didn't want to pass a continuing. We don't want to pay for these buildings in perpetuity. So um, Board of Education heard that, administrator heard that, and uh, converted it to a 37-year bond. So after the buildings are built and paid off in 37 years, all that remains is the continuing portion. I think that that works out to be like a 1.4 mil property tax over the course of the 37 years, but I think that drops off to like a 0.4 maintenance or operating bond or operating levy after that. Is that right? 0 0.46. 0 0.46. Thank you. It's about $16 annually um, over the course of the entire building, um, and then $33 for the 37 years. So it's $49 total for $100,000 property. So, so that's kind of the history of the levy bond. That's what it looks like. I'm um, going to get into some specifics about New Carlisle here in a minute. So what you've been waiting for are some concept designs about what the new building would look like. So there's kind of the front entrance, kind of the bus drop off. Um, and another piece I want to point on is that the CTC does not have to purchase property. We've got enough existing property today that we can build this brand new building uninterrupted with the current campus outright. So um, 
that's that's a plus. So we don't have to spend money on property. That's more money that's going directly towards building. Um, here's another rendering of kind of the front of the building. Uh, just another rendering right there. Again, this is all just concept. I'm not saying that the building's going to look like this if, if the levees pass, but um, again, another concept. That'd be a sharp building. If it would built, be, it'd be very nice. <laughs> very nice. Um, here's kind of the floor plan. So the main two story structure in the middle, that would all be academic classrooms. So your traditional math, reading, writing, science, and then all the wings on the outside would be labs, and then the back would be kind of lunch rooms and assembly areas. So here's the main concept. Here's the back half of it. Uh, there would be the current CTC uh, land that's owned. You can see the new building there in red. And then uh, kind of up here, I think this has got a laser pointer on it. Yeah. Here's the existing campus right here. Clark State's over here. And this would be where the new building is being proposed. Again, there's just a, a concept for floor layout, different labs, classrooms. Much better than what we have today. Um, one, one way in, one way out. Well, within reason, right? You have to have enough for life safety and, and uh, evacuation. But security would be taken care of. Class space would be taken care of. Lab space would be taken care of. So again, this is just a concept. But you know, in, in all theory, this is what we're going for. So how does this impact New Carlisle individually? Um, I, I did some numbers. I did some voodoo. And so please take some of this with a grain of salt. I did make some assumptions here, but they're within 10% of each other, these numbers I'm going to present to you. So Clark County uh, students, all of Clark County, they go to CTC, there's 813 of them. As of today, 153 of those 813 are Tecumseh local schools kids. Um, Tecumseh local schools is vastly, is, is a big portion of the, so what, 16%, something like that, of the total uh, population of CTC. So CTC, or Tecumseh, and this area um, benefits greatly from Clark County CTC. Um, so 133 of those 153 students that applied to CTC got accepted. Um, the rest of them got put on a wait list. Um, so they're either going to Tecumseh right now, and that, so there's also a, a program of those 133, some of them might not have got their first choice. So CTC has a uh, program to where, well, you can't fit here, but we've got this opening, do you want to do it as a second choice? So they will get put there. So that 133 includes that, but there are flat out um, 20 kids in this area that didn't make it, no space for them. So if you take the Tecumseh local school students and then you kind of distill it down to New Carlisle, of those 133, 50 of them live in the city of New Carlisle proper. It's 6% of the total CTC population that is represented by this city. So the median home value in the city of New Carlisle, I looked it up, um, might be a little bit higher. This was based upon 2022 data as 110,500. So the average annual cost to a household to pass this bond and operating levy would be $54 a year. Not person, not individual, per household. Now it's gonna be greater or less based upon your home price, but 54 is a good average number. So, what does that mean? It no. makes sense. You, you guys <laughs> are really happy about your new McDonald's, right? Yes, so, I stopped at your local McDonald's on my way in here, and I bought a Big Mac. All of it? You want it? <laughs> <Muck it. laughs> I'm not at that. <laughs> this Big Mac cost $5, $4.99. The monthly cost to the average homeowner in New Carlisle is four fifty. Now, yes, that's over thirty-seven years, but I think that we can all sacrifice eating a Big Mac once a month, not only for CTC but for our health. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the total cost of the uh, bond issue uh, over thirty-seven years is going to be four million dollars to the area. The taxpayers are going to have to pay four point four million dollars to build these schools 
over that 37 year time. But there will be approximately 1,850 new students that come out of New Carlisle proper to go to CTC. Okay? So let's assume that the average annual income for each one of these students is $50,000. Is $50, some are going to be more, some are going to be less. I hope there are a lot more, but that's a good number. That means that of those students over 37 years, that's $1.8 billion generated in the economy by students who went to CTC, right? So the number of students that need to stay in New Carlisle and spending at least 1% of their annual income in the city, as well as paying their 1.5% income tax to the city, you need 96, 96 students of that 1,800 to stay in the area. That's 5% of the total number of students that New Carlisle is going to send over the next 37 years, and you'll break even on your investment. I expect you're going to make a lot more money. Uh, we've got brand new housing going on. There's going to be carpentry students, electrical students, HVAC students who are going to be building those homes over there. I guarantee it. Um, you know, you've got all these industries that can pull from these people. So it's, is it a long-term investment? Absolutely. But, you know, the, the means are definitely going to outweigh the, the methods. So here's a quick spreadsheet if you want to look. Um, here is all the courses that I think um, directly impact the city of New Carlisle. I listed all these um, industries that are in the city limits, PFI and Intrigue, Custom CNC, Jeff Sato and Small Engine Service, H.C. Holzen and, new, and the new construction in the city, Lady Fingers Nail Salon and Sheer Divas, Cosmetology, Culinary Arts, Various, Dental Assistant Team DDS, Electrical Trades, Ledford Electric, and also the new construction in the city, EMT, New Carlisle Fire and EMT Department, uh, health, all the health um, healthcare related programs that are offered, Bancrest, miscellaneous clinics, maybe a future ED in city limits, um, heating and air, gent mechanical, Douglas heating and cooling, and the new construction in the city, veterinary science, Windreach uh, Veterinary and NC Animal Hospital, welding, fab metals, Mad River Steel, and custom way welding. Um, what I've got there, that's the estimated number of, I, I'm not going to guarantee you that's right. I did some, some extrapolation, but there's 30 students of those 50 that are in New Carlisle that are in one of those programs that could benefit one of those businesses. So there's business here, there's business coming, it needs the workforce to fill them. Uh, closing statements, CTC is the oldest CTC in the state of Ohio, original buildings. CTC turned away 200 students uh, this year due to lack of space. 20 of the 200, 10%, were Tecumseh local students, seven of which were New Carlisle residents. Average cost per home in New Carlisle, um, average homeowner will pay $4.50 a month in taxes to build the new building. CTC provides career-ready students for an aging workforce. CTC grad, uh, students graduate without any debt and contribute to economic growth as soon as they graduate. And then a yes vote is an investment in our region and the city of New Carlisle. I'll take any other questions that haven't been asked organically already. <laughs> Sir. You said you guys spent uh, $100,000 repairing the roof. Mm -hmm. Is that the entire roof on all the build on one building, and is it still leaking due to the photos that you showed? Is that the ones that was fixed? It was patches, okay, and it was on multiple buildings. Okay, so I'm watching both of you to see if you got the same answer, <laughs> <laughs> and and you passed. That's good. <laughs> all right, thank you. Yes, sir. What's your plan if this doesn't pass? Hmm. I think we're going to have to regroup and kind of get back together and probably get back to you on that, um, to be honest with you. Fair. I, mean, um, I just wondered if you had a backup plan. I mean, the, the, I don't want to speak for Michelle or the rest of the board, but I mean, the, the need is there. It's just a matter of getting the financials to pay for it. Um, this is the last time that the state of Ohio will chip in, so that doesn't change the need. It's just going to change the, yeah, the how. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. So. Good question. Any others? 
If not, go ahead. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, yeah, I just want to confirm how many more students you thought you could take from Tecumseh. Because will it, we notice that in our classrooms that some of our juniors and seniors are missing? Do you think? That's a question I, I probably am not educated enough to answer at this point in time. It will have an impact. There, yeah. there will be additional students who want to go there. Um, I'm putting on my CTC hat right now. Um, you know, I want the students to have the best opportunity for them. If there's an opportunity at CTC, I want them to have the ability to take it. Well, yeah, and fifty-four dollars a year, even yeah. though the house payment will go up a little. I'm really for our schools. I think we need to get them back in shape. And I was mortified when I saw JBS. I and I'm sorry, I called it JBS again. But yes, most of us still do. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> some people do. <laughs> yes. Good question. I just want to let you guys know, like, I see your guys' sacrifice and your creative planning, and I think that that deserves an applause. Thank oh. you for your hard work. Well, thank you. Yay. I agree. Other than that, I think we're done, Matt. Okay, I, I will end with this, um, and I won't say much more, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick around to the end of the meeting in case anybody wants a sign. And then also, um, we are trying to run an ad in the Springfield News Sun uh, in support of CTC. It's going to be a front page ad. If anybody would like to have their name listed in the advertisement, please get with me after the meeting. I'd be happy to help you out with that. And what would that cost? Five dollars. Cheap, 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 cheap. A Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a dollar Big more. <laughs> Matt, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate the time. I know it's long, but it's worth it. If it weren't important, it wouldn't have taken so long. All right, moving right along. And I won't forget him tonight. Oh. Did he manage your oh, report? <laughs> thank you, Mayor Coach, members of council, members of the public. I would like to share with you the city manager report. Um, we will start off with the service director report. Uh, Mr. Kitko is uh, on his way back from a much due vacation, so I'm gonna take his report for him. A lot is just repetitive from last time. Um, so if you have any questions on that, just yeah, if I can answer them today, we can. If not, I will definitely get back with you guys uh, by the end of the day on Wednesday when Howie is back. Um, but for public work departments, I know he said this at the last meeting, but if you see any potholes, please contact the city for, for repair. We are out there, we're always on top of it as best as we can, but there's a lot more eyes out there that can see that than we can. So if you see anything on that, either let us know at the city building, you can sign up for TextMyGov, you can report it that way as well. But again, anytime that we can have those extra set of eyes, and the same thing as for code enforcement, if you notice someone's property, because your property maintenance is not the best, you can go ahead and report that to the city building as well. Under sewer department, the plant is uh, still performing general maintenance. That is one of our oldest, older water plants up there, so it does require, uh, it does require some sort of uh, maintenance on a monthly uh, basis, <coughs> more so than our newer buildings. Um, NatureWare grant, I know how he did submit the re reimbursement. I think it is just under 45000 And again, those were for the gazebo projects that we did at the pool. They were a great addition. If you get a second, please drive by. We also had a third party come in just to make it a little bit more personable. We had them put some rails up and some gates that if someone wanted to play, uh, block it off or actually combine two gazebos in the one, they, they'll be able to do that too. Lots of positive <coughs> feedback from the uh, renters of the gazebos this year. We're looking to build on that for next year. Um, Monroe Meadows and Reserve Honey Creek Housing Development Construction Update. He does have that at the bottom under, under additional. I did speak with D.R. Horton this morning. We had a short meeting uh, regarding that term sheet. That's it's still in negotiations. But he did mention that D.R. Horton will be going vertical in November. I'm assuming that is for their model home that people can go and tour. So good news on that as well. D.R. Horton is moving a little bit faster than Arbor Homes from what I can see but they're still on as scheduled as planned. So we are excited for those houses to <coughs> break ground. Any questions for Mr. Kitko's departments? Go ahead, Bill. I've noticed throughout the city, uh, they're getting a lot of the ADA ramps in mm -hmm. and uh, tearing up people's yards. Okay. And <laughs> wasn't my yard, I don't live on mm -hmm. the corner. But, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, that project finally getting 
in all the areas of the city, not sure. just you know certain areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, kudos to uh, Mr. Kiko and his department. Great, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Mr. Bridge. Yes. When you guys talked with Dr. Horton, did you have any conversation about the difference in the <coughs> when they pitched to us? mid three hundred thousand dollar homes and now the sign says upper two hundred thousand dollar homes so we did not talk about that today um i did talk to him probably late last week about that particular issue uh they am going they do have a single car garage option they're going to do so that does bring the square footage down just a little bit but that is on their lower end of things when you do a marketing you want that low number to be there they're not anticipating that but for a marketing standpoint they're putting it low 240s on there by the time you go in and add all your stuff up there, it's going to be well above the two two forties. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Candy. Yeah, um, I heard you say this, and I actually have heard it before. The rent on the gazebos. I hadn't realized those were for rent. I thought they were just for use. How much is the rent for the gazebo? Uh, I'm not going to say that because I don't know off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, but they are for rent. They are definitely a rentable, rentable source. Yes. It's no different than a shelter house here or, you know, or our, our, our old shelter house or this shelter house. So when we look at that kind of stuff, especially at the pool, you kind of look for ways to do some additional revenue streams because the pool really has a hard time year in and year out making that positive right. that's why that's why the council uh, that's why we decided to put there uh back in the grant application process back in the day okay. a couple years ago well can could i find out how much that rent is i'll have it out meeting, to you yes please. absolutely yeah. i would have had it today sorry i just wasn't that's expecting okay. that question okay. sure go ahead Peg. um i've asked howie before and he's never really given me a date um when is a sidewalk on peas going in um, I would ask him about that. I know he brought that up a, a few meetings ago. Um, I want to see if it's on here, though. It's part of the Clark County Road Project. So he doesn't have a date on his resurfacing project here, so I will get that out and have a date to you guys. Not a problem. And I also had asked him a couple meetings ago about making the water in town softer, mm -hmm. and he said that it would only require putting more salt in. Can we do that or is there additional equipment needed um definitely there's a way um but i would definitely recommend us having a specific meeting on that specific purpose um because i think that will require some new equipment um and some increased product on our salt uh, but the, if i could not tell you the ins and outs of what that's going to do to take um, if that's something council would like to have more information on we can definitely set up some work sessions on that uh, so we can have some more concrete information to you guys. I think the last time we talked about it, um, how long ago was that? Do you remember? It's been, I'm assuming you're talking to me, sir. Whoever, whoever can answer <laughs> it. I know it was like, I, we. It seems last... like we talked to about a year or so ago. And if I remember correctly, he said that the water was at the state standard, I think he said, or county standard. I, I've, I hate to put words in his mouth, and mm -hmm. I, I'm not real clear on the memory of what yeah. he said. Uh, it would be, I do remember him saying it would be a significant cost in salt to do that, mm -hmm. to lower it, I forget the, 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 like one or two, whatever it is to get the salt, the, the iron down. Yeah. Uh, but to also comment on, on the Vice Mayor's comment, the... I have a water softener at home, and I still have iron on my <coughs> on my showers, on my doors. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. We must really have hard water, and in fact, I think it's so hard I don't know how it comes through the pipes, but it comes out liquid. But when it dries, it turns into steel, and <laughs> it's kind of a pain to clean. But you know, you, you get the right chemicals and stuff. You know, acid and stuff like that. You can get it off. You know that, and I think you said that because me and I talked to Miss Eagleson about this earlier in the week, and I talked to Howie about it. Um, it we're we're about average where we are for our water salt levels, what we put in. So from that aspect, we're average. So for us to do that, I think it would have doubled the amount of salt. But he did bring up the fact that it may not be so much salt; it may be a lime issue, and that does get really hard to to get off. Right. You know, so. Um, Again, he's an, he's he's got the vast experience, and that's his that's his job to understand all this stuff. So I think maybe 
when he's back, we have that conversation with Mr. Kiko, and we have a probably a work session on this. Uh, if that's something council want to do, you guys can direct us to do that. Um, we may have to do a slight rate increase to get us by, but the citizens may be okay with that, to be honest with you. But it, water operations and wastewater operation is such a complicated process. It truly is. Um, I, I'm not trained in that field. So, again, I would feel more comfortable, especially with this particular discussion, have, have our guy who's in charge of that department come and have a discussion with council on that for sure. Go ahead, Bill. Since we're talking water, mm -hmm. uh, is there a problem with the billing for water? Mm -hmm. The reason I'm asking, I got a call today. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody, and let me remember the conversation, I think they got a, a shutoff notice that they owed like $800 or $900. And I'm thinking, when they first told me, I thought, what do you got, a four inch main open somewhere? Uh, and then they said, they called the city, somebody I don't know who she talked to, the lady talked to, said it was a computer glitch, a computer something with billing, and it was getting fixed. So I just wanted to, to and she did not know uh, she was talking to a councilman, but I put it in a memory bank to ask about that tonight. Was this recent or back when we did our conversion on our software, which was a year ago? Um, the way she talked, it was recent. Well, I was thinking like on this month's bill. They didn't bring last my month's bill. Mm -hmm. and I think we would have, they would have let me know. So we haven't had any glitches. Mm -hmm. Our systems worked real well since okay. we converted. Um, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, she might have been talking about a year ago, but she didn't indicate that. And, you know, I'm kind of thinking that if there was a major problem with it, we'd all got phone calls. <laughs> And I would have, they would have. Yeah, told yeah, they would lit you guys up, you know, like firework on the 4th of July. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, thank you. I was just curious to know. Sure. Go ahead, Ken. While we are talking about water, um, Ms. Eggleston and I have been talking with the city about the water. So here's these little pamphlets that they've made up. They're very informative, and, and we want the city people, the citizens, to know that we also have the little dye packs. Hey available for people to check their toilets with. Now this is a little two pack. If you happen to have three, ask for another one. I'm gonna hand these down to all the council members too. <laughs> and um, we talked a few things about the water and, and Peggy and I have been trying, Ms. Eccleston and I have been trying to get to get Vice Mayor, so I'm so sorry. And um, there's a piece of paper I wanna give you guys too on that, which is the rates and the, um, I'll hand those out. And it's like the basic water bills and the averages and things like that. It's something I want to talk about with you all and see if we can make our prices a little better for the citizens. I mean, there, I know there's not a lot we can do. We talked about this. It's to get a new program where it bills per gallon would be really, I think it was like 250,000, quote me, but it was very, very high. And there's no reason to throw a program away when it works pretty darn well. So I just want to talk a little bit about maybe lengthening the time or giving the things. But I give you that piece of paper, and if you could take a look at it, and maybe next week or at work session we could check it out and see what we think. We can shoot for it. Uh, I understand the work session is pretty well jammed. Okay. But uh, if we've got time, I don't have a problem with it. I think it would help our citizens, and you know, that's what I'm all about. So if we could, that'd be great. And there are a couple of ideas I have to share, so I'll be happy to do that. That's all. Back to you. City manager's report. I was, yeah, I was finding out where we left off service report. Uh, I'm oh, all good, all good, great information. Uh, moving on with the city manager report, our fire and EMS report with our fire chief, Chief Presty. Mayor, council, citizens. For the month of August, New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 97 EMS calls in the city. The division responded to nine fire-related calls, three good intent calls, or service calls, and two false alarms. We had six EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township and three answered by Barton Central Park due to medical type two being on a response. We answered five mutual aid calls for Pike Township and five mutual aid calls from Russell Park. 
At the time of the report, our room number was, was 1,087, and at this time we're 1,153 runs for the year. Um, <coughs> we are done with hydro flushes for the year. They have been completed. Um, we are having our open house for fire prevention month in, uh, for October, on October 12th, from 12 to 3. Uh, the city please come out and we have food, uh, games for the kids and adults, while also our door prizes. Uh, come out to the station, meet the firefighters, to see what the what the equipment is that the city paying for, that we've been working for. Uh, we also would have a list of the, of the several grants that we've been awarded over the past five years and what we've used that money for and saved our money, you know, saving money by having the grants. Uh, also, too, we still have free smoke alarms for the citizens. Uh, just call, call the station, or come by and we'll be glad to either come out to the residence and put it in for you or give you a uh, smoke detector. Any questions? Go ahead, Bill. Chief, uh, the runs that we have to date, how does that compare to last year? We're about, we're about almost 30% increase. 30% increase? What is that raw number? Was it 1150 something, I thought you said? Our, our run number right now is 1,153, it's the last round. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. That's a, so, major, that's a major increase in, in a year's time. We've been steadily increasing in the, over the past three years. Okay, thank you, sir. Kathy? Yeah, just to follow on that question, do you have a reason or do you know why that's I mean, increasing? It, it's from everything from mutual aid calls to mm -hmm. the simple fact of just people having more runs, more calls. Uh, we definitely have more MBAs in the past two years. MBAs against the deputies, MBAs have, have drastically rose over the past two years. Uh, also, uh, a lot more, we've had a lot more fire related runs this year and last year. Um, it's just, just life. Just fun. You know, the things are getting busier, uh, people having more problems. And plus, also, too, we have a very large aged population in the city. Mm -hmm. And as with elderly, we have to worry around a lot more. Uh, more runs with that also. I was also curious if you guys had decided what was going to happen with the garage. Uh, we we're still working with that. Still with, working. Uh, Mr. Bridge and Mr. Pickup. Okay. All right. Thank you. Follow up, if I may. If Go anybody ahead. else has anything. Uh, as soon as I think of it, I'll ask it. <laughs> it just went that quick. I would like to say one thing uh, off the subject, if I could, to the CDC. I'm a graduate in 1979 of the Joint Vocational School of Firefighting, oh, yeah. and uh, it was a tremendous help for me. It got me through high school, uh, and I've hired two CTC uh, in our department, and they're both now full-time firefighter medics with the uh, Humor Heights, making over 50-some thousand a year, starting out. That's, wow. that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's CTC alumni sign. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did your memory come back? Not yet. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm getting at. <laughs> <coughs> Any oh, other questions? I, I do remember it, sir. <laughs> it just jumped in my head. Okay, go ahead. The initials MVM, I think you said? Motor vehicle accidents. Okay, thank you. That's why I was going to ask you, because I had never heard that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like I said, they've that been alphabet before. over the past couple of years. Thanks, sir. No other questions? Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, moving on to the city manager report under planning and zoning and mayor's court report. Um, total violations, 142. We had uh, violated 67 properties. Out of those properties, there's average 2.03 violations per property. Um, six abatement complete, completed, 55 closed violations, two vacant properties violated, one work order issued, two, nu two nuisance property list. Uh, four violations submitted to mayor's court and four property extensions granted. Um, Brian beefed up his front page here too a little bit so you can see some permits that were actually issued. And then too, we actually broke down <coughs> that summary of the violations. So you can actually see broken down the, the data from that 142, what those violations are. And then it continues on with the uh, normal planning and department uh, report. And then it follows up with our mayor's court report, which is always attached. 
Any questions on the planning and department or mayor's court report? And for the, do you have one, sir? I was going to say, do you, you want a motion to approve the financial loan? I'm sorry, I'm ahead of you. No worries, no problem. Uh, I mean, the city managed report for under uh, police report. Um, we have 238 calls taken, 36 reports, 87 assists, 10 criminal arrests, 3 felony arrests, 4 misdemeanor arrests, 3 warrants, 42 traffic stops, 29 traffic warnings, 13 moving uh, citations, 1,019 business checks, uh, 13 code enforcement follows up, and 3 traffic qu crashes, and 11 parking citations. Any questions? No? Move to accept the finance report. Wait a minute. Should we ain't ready yet? She hasn't given it. And moving on, any questions on the police report, sir? No. No. Moving on to the city manager report. Before we come back to me for a final it out would be our fantastic finance director. <laughs> and David props at the last meeting. Uh, Ms. Harris does a fantastic job for the city of New Carlisle, so she will give her finance report for this past month. Oh, my God. And that, thank you, Mr. Bridge. You're welcome. Council and members of the public, we had a great uh, revenue month for August, and I'm going to do the August financial. We did receive our second half of our real estate settlement. So we brought in $1,248,324.19 for a total year to date of $7,398,568.20. Our expenditures for August were $834,739.48 for a year to date of $5,986,573.83. Our statement of cash ending balance as of August is $8,343,563.17. All our bank accounts are reconciled. I'm going into the net income tax collection. We had receded $170,267 from CCA for the month of August. And for the year to date, we are about 4.5% above our collections from last year. Going down to our mayor's court for the month of August, they had receded in fines and court costs $4,295 for a total year to date of $34,493.80. And then our start, um, well, our interest um, income is still going up, and, I, and I've been excited to share that the um, our investments are still averaging over five percent and we have receded two hundred and twenty two thousand four hundred ninety three dollars in interest with the money that we have in the bank and I'm hoping it's going to be another hundred thousand by the end of the year so it will go down they all talk about it but right now we're just loving that so that's that's good money the pool revenue report, I will have some more expenditures when we close out September, um, just a little bit, but for the year to date, we did receive in our ODNR uh, reimbursement. We estimated at 45000 we got 41000 <coughs> So our pool is running at, um, I updated that real quick, 56000 in the uh, red. So that's... Yeah, that's just for this year. We did not have any general fund money that went into it in the beginning of the year because didn't seem to need it last year, but we'll, we'll, we'll be needing it. And I believe that is... Any questions in regard to the finance report? Oh, well, yeah. If not, I'll entertain a motion. Go ahead, Ken. Um, actually, I was pointing... Go ahead, Ms. Baum. Uh, Colleen. Yes. Do you have a... Um, Mrs. Harris, sorry. Uh, as far as the income tax being up the last two months, is there an explanation for that? Or? It's really hard to predict um, depending upon when they collect it. So we had, and we're again comparing from the prior year. So the month of June, they just didn't collect very much. We were down 12%, so it's kind of balanced out. Um, it, it's it's difficult. It's just what it is. Usually the most, you know, the first three months when everybody files their, their income taxes is our biggest collection months, but it's been um, 
hold and steady, so we're getting a lot of the withholdings from businesses and, um, yeah, but yeah, it's still up this year and it was up last year by the time we ended also. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions? If not, yeah, go ahead. Move. Move. Uh, Mrs. Harris, on the pool, <clears throat> say we, we've lost 56,000 on the pool? Yes. That seems to be a pretty big jump from last year. We Any did. indication why? There were a lot, when in the detailed reports, there was a lot of maintenance. Um, it, it actually had good attendance good daily uh, gate fees the concessions concessions almost always make quite a bit of money but uh, maintenance wise wages those are our two biggest um, so a lot of repairs that went into it this year okay thank you ma'am you're welcome any other questions <clears throat> not may i have a motion to accept the finance report so moved second motion and a second any right. further discussion mr burner councilman lindsay yes vice mayor eggleston yes mayor cook yes councilwoman grow yes councilman bond Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Accept, accept. May I have a motion to accept the uh, mayor's, uh, I'm sorry, the mayor's financial court report? So moved. Second. Any further? Mrs. Burr? Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Accepted 7 0. I'm assuming the pool is going to be, a, council is going to want to have a discussion on that when we start the budget work sessions. Mm -hmm. Can I, rec can, is there any documents or information that council wants that we can start getting together? that you guys want to see. We'll bring a list of improvements that we've done over the years. We'll bring, uh, Ms. Harris does a good job at these Excel sheets. Is there anything else that council wants that we can go ahead and get ready for you guys in anticipation of that particular discussion? You don't have to let me know now, but if you could just email me down the road so we can get a little time to uh, prepare that document for you. But I think I think this is a year that we got to have a real hard discussion about the future of the pool, mm. unfortunately. Mm. So. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Council. And we'll move on with the City Manager Report. This is the fun stuff, everyone. Uh, City Council at Farmer's Market. So we had set a date a while ago for September 21st. That is right around the corner for another market event. Um, last time um, it was pizza. Well, we got a little bit of donuts in the morning, and then it went into pizza in the afternoon. I, unfortunately, will not be available for this. This is my birthday weekend, so... I will not be available for this particular event. We can have everything ready to go for you guys, but we do need to know if council is wanting to move forward with that event. Okay. Any comment? Go ahead, Peg. In the past, when we've had these, I mean, we started having these so that the citizens could meet in an informal situation to meet the council members and in the past the only people the only council members that show up are me mr Grimm, and mr cook if nobody else wants to show up that's fine but we'll quit scheduling them i mean the farmers market is donating the space to us and it's a lot of work for for us to get ready for them, whether we have them at the shelter house or at the farmer's market. I will interject another thought here. I was downtown Saturday morning, and it looks like the farmer's market is dwindling down. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, for the amount of money that we spent and the time ensued, 
I would say that we probably ought to skip this one. And if we want to open it back up for a situation for next year, at that point in time, I think we could do it. But that would be my recommendation. Go ahead. <clears throat> I've been watching the farmer's market. Uh, in years past, it was huge. We had actual farmers here that was selling crops and goods. Now it looks more like a Saturday, Saturday afternoon flea market to me. They're selling things that has nothing to do with the farmer's market, in my opinion. The, uh, and I agree with the mayor and, and the vice mayor that uh, maybe we should not do this on the 21st. I will not be there. I will be working. So that's the reason I don't show up at them. Somebody conned me into taking a job, and I dumb it up and did it. Uh, so uh, I work most every Saturday, actually Friday and Saturday. So uh, if that needs to be made into a motion to cancel that, I will make an, a motion to, to cancel the 21st. Just a comment. He did second. Um, I was wondering if maybe we could join the firemen's open house because that might be a, a bigger event and we could meet more people there and support our firemen and if that's something they would be interested in having us there. I think that's a wonderful idea. I heard that people don't like it. You don't, he don't like, like us? Do you want to give us a hot dog? Shall we bring donuts? <laughs> Have you ever known a cop or a firefighter who didn't like donuts? <laughs> 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 yeah. Twelve, three. Okay. On the twelfth. Yeah, that's like donuts. Now Saturday <laughs> might be quite work out because that's also the Halloween night for the farmers market, and that starts at four. Okay. We're running right. twelve to three, and that starts at four. Alrighty. On the twenty. On the twelfth. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just let me know and I'll hook you up with uh, Lieutenant Keith. Well, it depends on what these guys say, what they're interested in. So. <clears throat> Any further? I'd like Go to ahead. Hang Sorry on. to interrupt your motion. If it helps counsel out any, I did hear today that the farmer's market is considering shortening their, out, sh shortening their dates because no one comes once school starts. So I just wanted you guys to know that before you voted because they, they are anticipating a very low turnout for the remainder of the markets. All right, Carrie Ann, you had something. Um, yeah, I think October 12th in the afternoon at the firehouse would be great. Maybe we can also help them and help serve the kids and everything. I think it would be really great for the community to get together that way. Anything further? So the voting on the motion to cancel the 21st. Lindsay was the first, Shammy was the second. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. 7 0. Back to you. Um, do you guys want to, do you need to do a motion for the 12th? Uh, if, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, with the permission of the fire chief through the city manager, oh, well, if you would like for us to be there, uh, again, it's on a Saturday, I won't be there, but uh, I'll make a motion uh, that the council comes to that with their coffee and donuts, whatever they want to bring. That, that, that's fine with us. I mean, that would also give the council also a first hand look at what we're putting oh, out for the citizens right. mm -hmm. as far as, because we're going to have everything listed like we normally do, what set of gear costs, what you know, training costs, but, uh, uh, air pack costs, engine costs, medic, all that. How many people go through that event for you? It's quite, a, it's heavily attended, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's very heavily attended. Last year, we, oh. we <clears throat> put it this way, you couldn't walk down the hallway. Right. Oh, my. So, okay. so do we need to make that a motion? It's pretty, what, pretty well Do we done. need to make that into a motion or not? What does council think? Well, I think you should, but I would do it yearly. I think it's, I a, think so. it's a great opportunity. I'll, I'll make the motion to that. Council that can't attend to attend that on Saturday. I said, I'll be working. 
We'll I might be able to show up for an hour or so. At a table, probably in the training room. Okay. That way you'll be inside. Okay. You'll have a second. With heat? With heat. With heat. I'll second it. I got somebody else. Yeah. Oh, you did it. Okay. Uh, what what time is that going to be? Twelve to three. Twelve to three. Do you want to buy bypass the donuts and just maybe do pizza, or do you want to do any food right. at all? Ask him what he would like us to bring. Uh, since it started at noon, I mean, if you guys want to pitch in on the hot dogs and that type of stuff, that'd be fine. Because mm -hmm. uh, I know we have already got some donations for that. We are also got some uh, donations from Aeroclean. They're going to do the ice cream things so for us again mm -hmm. this year. Uh, usually what we do is hot dogs and uh, we do like a pack of hot dogs, chips, and a, and a soda, that type of thing. Um, I'll get, if you want this right, you can get with me and okay. I'll get you in contact with Lieutenant Keachley. She's more or less running running this and she, she's the uh, fire prevention officer. This runs right with fire prevention week for the fire prevention. It, fire prevention week is always the first week of October and so that we do the open house at that time. Um, but good. like I said, I'll get, I'll get you hooked up with her and she'll be able to let you know where we're at with everything. Thank you. That's nice. One more Go minute. ahead, Bill. Uh, you mentioned a donation. What type of donation? 50 bucks, 100 bucks? I, like I said, I'll give with Lieutenant Keishley. That way she'll, she'll do what she already has. Okay. What? Did you buy the food out of the fire association fund? Excuse me, sir. Does it come out of your fire association fund? The food? Uh, the, the, right no, now, right now, what we're getting is all donations so far. Okay. Yeah. I'll give 20 bucks. Mr. Bridge, what do we spend on that donuts and coffee? A hundred dollars? Um, the donuts usually around, I think like eighty-two dollars last time, and then the pizzas. I how many pizzas we end up getting from them last year? Maybe four or five. Then I go back five. for a second one, second round. So if I'm in Vegas, I would say you're spending just on the goods. 200 bucks to 300 bucks is, is council okay <clears throat> with <clears throat> mr. mayor if I may I'll amend the motion to donate uh, 150 dollars to the to that event for whatever the chief needs to buy hot dogs whatever they need to fill things out that they can't get donated if I can get a second for that second, second. Think second. For that. <laughs> any further discussion you? Well, right. Okay. Mrs. Burner. All right. So. Doing the amendment first. The amendment is to donate $150 towards um, items needed for the, for event. the event. Right. All right. And the first was Lindsay. Second, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> One of those. It, whichever he, I think he might have went first. That is originally, but yeah, I don't know. Okay, I heard you. <laughs> don't make it here. Okay, <laughs> Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Grow. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. All right, that motion passes seven zero. So now we'll vote on uh, council attending along with the fire department at their open house on 10 12 from 12 to 3. It's here and the first was Lindsay, second was Shammy. All right. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That also passes 7 0. Yeah. We have some stuff left over from the pool, chips, stuff, individual cells. We'll just probably end up taking them down to Fire Chief so he can use them for that event. We're going to use them for the Council and Donut event at the Farmer's Market. Um, I don't know off the top of my head how much it is or, or what it is. I should because it's sitting in our office, but I do know it's at least some ch uh, chilly, hot, hot Fritos. Yeah, those in the trash can. Fiery, fiery Tostitos or something like that. Uh, nacho cheese, boss. It's not uh, the cheese in the not just the cheese machine. No, well, it's already sitting at the station. Oh no, no, it isn't the back. The chips of boxes I oh. saw it yet. You haven't seen those yet. Um, fantastic! That is a great idea. Whoever thought of that? That's a great opportunity to get exposure because a lot of you guys, lot of you guys lot of are already there have. anyway. A lot of you show up anyway, so mm -hmm. I mean, I was planning. It's a tremendous way for everybody 
That way, they look see something of ours, and they want to ask us a question or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Twelve. Okay. Moving on. Uh, work session on 923 due to miss session on 992. Uh, discussion and motion if necessary. So if council is interesting in doing that, uh, missed work session on the 23rd. I have the availability if council wants to do that. Um, we can talk about some things and you know, let's keep the process moving forward. Ultimately, it's up to council's decision. If not, we'll go through with the second one, second Monday in October, which I think is maybe the 14th, if I'm remembering correctly. Do we need a motion? If you want to, yeah. If you well, well, what? Go ahead. I thought, I thought we had a blanket motion for the second. Never mind. We, 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 we make a motion. We, we do have a blanket motion, I thought, for the second. But this month we have one on the 23rd, which right. is next Monday. Well, we're asking for that one because you guys missed the one on the second this month. Yeah. Right. But we moved it. We've had already moved it to the 23rd. Wow. Mm -hmm. We did we it. Did? You wasn't here when we did it. We moved it to the 23rd. Did you know that was get the before? previous month? No, you didn't. I mean, that was the previous month. I forgot to run the legal ad for the uh, last week. We so. didn't. We didn't do a motion mm -hmm. for the 23rd. That was the uh, yeah. August one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was, we're gonna have to oh, leave. you're talking about I August. Know. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm in the wrong month. Right Mr. Bond, you that, Mr. Bond's that vicious? Oh, my gosh. Give me a motion for a work session. Uh, set the standard date. right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> you're out of here. I motioned for a work session on the 23rd to discuss city business. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Jamie. Any further discussion? Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Sheehan? Yes. That's a 7 0. Awesome, thank you. And moving on to the city manager report 2025 Ohio Municipal, Ohio Municipal League Conference. It's called Municipal Municipalities Matter this year. I did attach information to the end of the city manager report. You may have noticed a little printout that we put on each of your desk. If you want to go to this conference, please, this is the next week, uh, fill out that information and get it back to us or give me a call and let me know what, what events you want to attend. If you do, do not want to go, we just won't hear from you and that'll be the end of it. I think Mr. Lindsay went to this when he was first uh, uh, back in the day. It's a really good conference. It's a good opportunity to get and learn some basic level stuff. Um, I tend to go every two to three years with this just for, for free refreshers. But they do got some great topics this year. I put the agenda out, Forever Chemicals. Um, did I see drone on this one too, cybersecurity? I can't remember that one or another conference. But again, always a good opportunity. Council does have uh, quite a few thousand dollars left in their training, tra training travel transportation budget. So we do have that budgeted. Again, please take your time and look at that attachment I put to the the city manager report. If you have the availability, please come. You don't have to go for the whole thing. You can go for a day and come up and come back if that's what you want to do as well. Again, <clears throat> just look at it and uh, give, give us information within the next week. Maybe um, have it back to us by the uh, work session date. Bring it that day. We can go ahead and get a book. <coughs> the deadline to register for the conference is October 16th, but the deadline to get the reduced rates on the hotel, should you want to stay there, is October 1st. So, again, just have this back to us on the 23rd, should you want to go. If not, we'll just uh, hopefully find a conference for you that's better suits your schedule, maybe on down the road. Any questions on that? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, and trying to get it back together here. The city manager will be making the reservations for the hotel rooms? I won't. Who who makes those? April will. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, somebody in the city will. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, we'll do we it for you. No, we no. We don't do have to do it ourselves. No, we'll words. put it on the credit card, all that stuff. Okay. Yep. All right. And then we'll reimburse for our meals? You get a per day DM, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what that is now? Uh, Sixty bucks, so we can get steak or something. Reasonable. reasonable. Three thousand. I haven't used it since. McDonald's. I'm gonna go to that Colorado well, conference. It's not really you. specified, but you know they're usually okay. said reasonable, yeah. and just for yourself, not if your spouse goes. Right. Well, I don't have one. Right. Well, <laughs> any of the <laughs> others. That, yeah. I don't have a girlfriend. She's a girl. 
I get so stuffed at the conference itself, I'm just not even hungry by the time dinner rolls around. Okay, um, comprehensive land use plans. Early discussion have started with council. Uh, I did mention that in that last email we put out with you guys. Um, so 10, 14 is when we're looking to do that work session with council. Um, Brian and I have met a couple times on some preliminary data he's gonna to present to you guys. We also have some great questionnaires we're gonna be mailing out to the citizens. Um, but we really want your guys' input on the early work so far and then how we're gonna handle the comprehensive land use plan as a formality moving on. So if this, we don't need a, a, a motion to set this particular work session because we already are, it's the second meeting of the month. However, if you guys want to discuss this topic, does that need to be a motion or not? I don't know, I'm leaving it up to you guys. I do intend on bringing comprehensive land use plan information to the 10-4 work session. Question? Go ahead. The 14th is Columbus Day, is the city going to be open? Oh, it's going to be the 15th then. Okay. Just thought I'd mention that. So ten fifteen would be that? Yep. Okay, so I'm just gonna move on. So 2025 capital improvement plan and CIP and operating budget timeline. Uh, intro and first read, we do have that set for November 18th. We do plan on bringing action to council on December 2nd. With that being said, we would like to set some hard uh, work sessions date tonight with council between October 7th and November 11th. Um, and that will require motion. Uh, Mrs. Harris did bring some of her availability. Um, so the only issue we're having is the days of the conference, which is the 23rd and 25th. And then the week of the 14th is not good because we'll have some employees out for vacation. So right now we have the 7th, which is a normal council meeting. They, we have October 8th, October 9th. And then we also have October 28th, 29th, November 4th, and November 5th. So I don't know how council feels about it. Is this something that we try to do one the first week of October or do we kind of wait till the 28th, 29th so we can have them more in succession? Because if not, if we do one the 7th, 8th or 9th, it might be a week, week and a half before we pick that back up. And I don't, the conversation may fizzle a little bit. So if we keep them consecutive towards the end of the month, it may help out a little bit better. We do want to at least do three dates with you guys. We got some newer council members on, so we really want to take our, our time going through that budget so everyone is on the same page. Ultimately, <clears throat> it is council's decision how you want to handle that. And we will definitely facilitate whatever council wishes. Uh, but we should go ahead tonight and set some dates so the administration can start getting prepared for that. Mayor. Anyone have any favorites? Go ahead, Bill. If council does not object, I would propose the 28th, 29th, and the 30th. Quite honestly, that's only three days in October. I have that I don't really have anything scheduled. I do, but I can get out of one of them. I can change it. So if, if those three dates works for council, 28th, 29th, and 30th, hearing no comments, I move that we set that for the 28th, 29th, and 30th as a motion. Okay. Oh, three consecutive days. Oh, I Go ahead. My only comment. The 29th, I may have to leave a little early from the meeting, but other than that, 28th, 29th, 30th work for me. So that might be the only thing. Can we cater to or have some, maybe some low what? on the on the 29th to get out a little bit so we don't have heavy funds? Yeah, whatever your yeah. time frame is. And, and, and the meeting would start at, I assume, 6? Whatever is convenient I mean, for you guys. I mean, I know I don't get off work till five. Uh, they don't get off work till five, so I think six would be six is great. Close as soon as I think we could all be here. If you guys want to do six thirty, we I'm good with six. If six they are fine. Six, six good. Yeah. Mr. Bond, what we do on the 29th is we'll do some less complicated funds, like our community reinvest or some, you know, our CBD fund or something like that. Doesn't have anything in it that way. If we do get um, if you do have to leave early on the 29th, you're not missing any complicated it's, stuff. And we'll focus no the 28th and the 30th on our big, big funds. That's no and problem. that's the budget, correct, sir? Mm -hmm. Budget? 
the budget? Budget, yes. Okay. Will Will this be at the fire station like usual, or are we going to try and do it here? Well, um, here. Have the availability. Yes, sir. We'll We'll have it at fire station because it's so it's easier to hear and see everyone there, mm -hmm. and it leaves us open for renting. Yeah. All right, 28, 29, 30 at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. fire station. Any further comments? I made a motion. I don't know. Did you get a second on the motion? Yeah, okay. a second. <clears throat> 28, 29, 30. Yeah. Okay. That's 6 p.m. Uh, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Sheehan? Yes. Motion passes 7 to you. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. So, uh, reserves at Honey Creek and Monroe Meadows. So, bonds, the discussions are ongoing between two parties. So, you have the uh, reserves at Honey Creek and or DR Horton. They're using, right now, West, West Port Authority to issue their bonds. Uh, we do not know who is Monroe Meadows is going to use to issue their bonds. It could be a Port Authority <coughs> or it could be a new community authority, which we'll get to a little bit of that later on. Um, but um, term sheets right now, they're non-binding documents. This is really the beginning stages of developing that budget. Um, Monroe Meadows, we do have one million set aside and that's for Addison New Carlisle 235 improvements where it comes down and V's out. We wanna kind of have it come down and line up with the IGA parking lot. Now that we got a study back on that, it's a little bit more feasible than going up north. We just got that back like last Friday. So we're internally reviewing that document that I'll be having a meeting with some key stakeholders involving that particular project. Again, this is all going to come out of the TIF revenue. This is not coming out of the city's general obligation funds whatsoever. Um, and for reserves at Honey Creek, right now we do have $750,000 uh, of TIF money to go ahead and uh, improve Haddock's Park a little bit. And I'm going to add in here also for Mill Road improvement. We need to look at Mill Road since Brewbaker is going to be one of the main access points for reserves at Honey Creek. We don't want people being able to shoot up Mill Road and then turning left or right on Main Street. It's a very unsafe way to do that. So we're looking at creative ways to, to, to stop that. All that will be done in a study. But again, these term sheets, Mr. Cook had uh, questioned me a little about, about some stuff. So the bond stuff is a very long process. So I have communicated with the council for about a year and a half now. The bonds are two stage process. You do the one that just creates that tip. So we've already done that with E.R. Horton. We're getting ready to follow it up with Monroe Meadows. That just creates that tipping structure. It doesn't have anything to do with numbers. You guys are gonna get that down the road on that second uh, issue, on that second ordinance. Uh, and it's not even drafted yet because we don't have the term financing done. The city is not gonna make any money off this as far as property tax wise. All our revenue is gonna come in for a, on our income tax side of things. So, that property tax is essentially gonna be a wash. We're gonna get it, we're gonna pass it on to that developer. What we're negotiating now is what that developer calls a public infrastructure improvement. It's putting grass down a public infrastructure improvement. We know the sidewalks are, we know the infrastructure utility stuff that is. But when you negotiate these things, the developers want the TIF money to pay for more, as they should. So what we're doing right now is saying, yes, we agree to this, no, we don't agree to that. None of these are binding to the city whatsoever. That is a something that we had always had on the table for first and foremost. How they did Twin Creeks, the city was on the hook for those bonds, which is why when I first took over, we had to enter that lawsuit, we got it settled. We got like 300 and something thousand dollars and we put it towards those payments. So whoever negotiated that for Twin Creeks just did not do the city justice. So this is no obligation to the city's general fund. It is all going to go back to the developer through the new community authority, which we'll get into later on. that be another funding net mechanism for that bond. But again, we're not going to have anything left over from property tax revenue to even really have or I don't want to say care how much they want to charge because we're not we're not going to come up with a surplus. If there is any way for us to have a profit at the end of it, then yeah, we can be a little bit more picky, but we're not. They're actually going to take a little, probably a little bit lost just off the property tax, try to refund their in public infrastructure improvements. They're going to get additional revenue from selling the land and building the houses. Um, so very early process when once we have that budget set out that's going to lead into that second ordinance for council to approve um, but it's going to take some time to get those numbers out i know miss wright at this not this last meeting i think the one before that you asked me about that term all these are 30-year terms so each phase is a 30-year term so phase one and how we have it constructed 
Uh, Monroe Meadows, I, th I think they got eight phases. Don't quote me on that's really not important right now. Um, let's say phase one starts November 1st. That's when that 30 year time starts, okay? So phase one is done, they go into phase two. When phase two starts, let's say phase two starts in January the next year following November. That's when that 30 year clock starts on that particular phase. So each phase, that 30 year clock starts when that first house is built. That's when they start collecting that revenue off that. So that's uh, how most of them are set up nowadays. Um, that's how it is set up in our agreements. Um, as we get into more of this, I would like to have Greg Smith come down, back down. He is our TIF attorney. He came down last year and gave you guys that presentation on the TIF itself, which is why we wanted to go this route, which is why we have the legislation to establish them here. Greg has done a fantastic job. What I put in front of council tonight, you have a memorandum, so it's city council mem mem memorandum. Please take a look at that. I'm gonna email you that as well, but I at least wanted you guys to have a hard copy of that, because sometimes people like to read hard copies as opposed to reading on the screen. Plus, too, I felt if you're sitting around the house, it'd be easier for you to grab that than to log into your computer to get it out. So, new community authorities, we are looking at doing something like that. I have did a general overview of what a new community authority it is. Please take a look at that. But we also went ahead and summarized the Ohio revised section, revised code section, that deals with new, new community authorities. In that ORC summarization, you're going to see some key definitions, um, how it's established, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are looking to form a new community authority on top to help complement that TIF. So I wanted you guys to have some basic information to kind of get through it. And I'm going to have Mr. Daniels come down probably at one of the meetings in October and give a give a presentation. And you guys can actually answer your questions after you have time to really sit down and look at that information given to you. New community authorities are really nothing new. Uh, basically, it, it's another funding mechanism for us to have a little bit more control over the uh, public improvements that, that go on in that particular development. Long, long example short, we have that TIF <coughs> revenue coming in. We know that, all right, this property right now, undeveloped, brings in $12 a year. Well, once they break it up, they put a house in there, now it's each parcel's bringing in $800, and those are just numbers for discussion. So a new community authority will allow you to go in and put additional millage just in that area to help pay for additional public infrastructure improvements or improvements down the road that you may want. <coughs> what it does is it, kept, it takes the burden off of the city. So if we have formed this new community authority, in 20 years, we need some road repair done up there. We can actually use community authority funds to fix it, opposed to city general obligation funds. So this is a funding mechanism that a lot, if not all, of these developments are putting in. And again, it's just one more way to take that burden off the city. It does go back to the cost of the homeowner, but that's very common. Um, we, the city did an assessment. I don't know if anyone ever known anyone that lives in Quint Truin Creek. Some people get an assessment. Some people do not get an assessment. Um, and that's based off of that lawsuit that we negotiated. So um, some people are still paying that 750 a year for that bridge to nowhere because that particular section did not get done. Well, we have a warranty bond, a performance bond that says, all right, we're gonna make sure this gets done. It's another safety net that the city wants to have in place that say the developer goes bankrupt like they did for Twin Creeks. We now have this bond that says we're gonna finish the project our own. So this really, this administration is really putting these mechanisms to make it at no risk to the city. Um, so again, please read over that. I'm going to have Greg come down. Greg is an expert of this field. He's does, he does these deals all the time. And that's gonna allow council to give some really, really complicated questions and have that expert answer them. Um, council needs to be very well informed when it comes to forming something like this. So I think this is step one. Let's read it, let's digest it. Please call me if you have any questions. And then two, we'll get, our, we'll get the uh, TIF attorney down here to give a presentation. But please just take a look at that stuff. Call me if you have any questions on it and I will be happy to walk you through what I understand about them as we speak. Any questions on that? Sorry, it's kind of winded with a lot. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah, um, just to make sure I kind of have the right track. 750 in a TIF for the park area for the kids, correct? So if we say, well, I want a two-seater boys and girls outhouse, that we have to wait until that money comes in or we would go ahead and pay for that and the TIF money would come back to us. That's the part I'm not understanding. So we, the TIF is, how it works is we get property tax revenue from the county that's receipts in our funds. From the houses. Yep, okay, and then the bond authority company will say, hey, every now and then, I'm sorry, the developer say, mm -hmm. every month we want this much money. Right. And it's based off what they spent. We put it in, we put it out. 
we're not going to be doing this work. It's going to be done by either the developer or we're going to contract out to do that. But it's going to be paid out of the TIF funds. It's not going to be paid out. So we're out probably going to pay first because we'll need something like that for the park to even function, I would think. Well, will we get TIF? It's not going to be done before the development starts. Right. So no, the, no, if it's, the TIF revenue will build up and then we'll start looking at improving this. Okay. I think I got you. Yeah. All so right. even on Addison, and that's a good question, because right now what we're trying to do and we're working with Choice One on this is that Addison New Carlisle improvement over here at mm -hmm. um, Monroe Meadows, right. what phase is that most appropriate? Is it phase one? Is it phase two? Is it phase three? You know, at what phase do we need to have that improvement done for the safe flow of traffic? And it's no different for that the Haddock's improvement down there either. What phase is the most appropriate to have this completed done so we're not having an influx of cars going up the, up the, up right. the mill road? Um, because believe it or not, I mean, where I'm at, they're throwing houses up left and right. And I know it's not a popular thing, but you really, it's, you don't notice a lot of traffic differences. You really don't. Now, I don't think that's going to be the same for us on Main Street because it's a one way like this. But as far as people coming and going out of these, especially Addison, New Carlisle, because there's a way to get out on church. No, not, is it church there? I'm Drake. sorry. Drake. And then no, to no, Leatherwood. Sorry. Leatherwood Scott. as well. So there's Scott. multiple ins and outs on Monroe Meadows. Right. Whereas we look at DR Horton, it's just Brubaker Drive and then straight on to 235. Right. So tra traffic naturally has this way to wind it in itself out. I don't go the major route to get on the highway around Max. I know it's going to be longer. I usually go to back roads to get around. So you're that. talking the light is going to be in front of the IGA instead of in front of the Horton, um, what do you call it, development. Which, how, how are we crossing 235? That's, that's the Addison New Carlisle. That's the Addison New Carlisle, yeah. and it's crossing onto 235 directly. <clears throat> it's going to come down. Not down at the drive through. Right. We'll no, drive. it's going to come down. Right. But you know that V it's right there? Down. You know the first house where the V is at? The study yep. says that has to be torn down. Good. Matt, it coming out this way, coming around and lining up directly with IGA. Okay, I get you now. So yes. it's going to come out right there. There's not going to be another light on down. No, no. So that 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 replaces the cut through that was up by the feed store. Remember that that was yes. a first plan. Okay. Yeah. All right, I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So when we looked at that outlook, it actually it's a, it's a win for the city. Mm -hmm. It's a win for Mark Hensley, and exactly. it's a win for the Mr. Peters and Mr. Mm -hmm. Chad uh, St. Grant who lives there as well. So really, the administration came together, and we looked at this. It was me and Howie like wait a minute, this will work out perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then I went and talked to Mark, he's like, all oh, for it. And then Mr. Peters was all for it. So we're like, all right, let's, let's formalize this awesome. with a study. So we just got that study back literally Friday. I love it when we work together. That's that the way so you awesome. gotta do it, it yeah. truly is. And Mark's on board, we're gonna have a meeting on that. We, it's hard getting, us, getting our schedules together, we're all three busy people, so we do have that coming up. I do believe it's in October. Good. But it is a really a collaborative effort, it truly was. And we're happy with the outcome, we truly are. Good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's, it's been a long time coming. It has. It has. But I think it's going to work out for everyone, and that's the goal. Mm -hmm. We want our business to succeed. We want our residents to be happy. But, you know, we want a little growth, too. And mm -hmm. we found that to work for everybody. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, policy. I still got citizen under the ear on there. Whatever you guys want to move forward with that, just let me know. Um, upcoming legislation. This time of year, it's going to be coming fast. And I do apologize. I'm trying to give council as much of a heads up as we possibly can. MOU with Clark County, that's where the opioid funds, trans funds transfer. Ms. Harris has been working on it. Um, we did put our bank account information, all that good stuff. Are you going to be? We will be, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's going. We are going to get some funds. So original on that discusses, we're just going to pass that on through the Clark County because it's so heavily earmarked. We don't have the resources to do what we have to do with it, depending on what the, how the fund's written. Mm -hmm. We just don't have the manpower. So we do, we do want to pass it on to county because they have all the um, uh, place, uh, things in place to help that program survive. So we do need an MOU for that. Jake is working on that. I'm anticipating that to be actually introduced and voted on at the next meeting, since it is, will be a resolution. Uh, reserves at Honey Creek TIF legislation, that is round two. That's gonna be that, that, that budget that you're gonna see hard numbers on. We're still kind of far away from there, but I at least wanna have it on your agenda that it is coming. Um, disaster recovery and response plan. Miami Valley Lighting, that is our contract that we renew every three years. That it's our electric bill for our shelter house, our lights on Main Street, um, city building, wastewater plant, et cetera, et cetera. Um, health insurance renewals, just finished my forum fire today on that. We usually see initially a very heavy increase, but Ms. Harris has them go back out the market. We average around an eight to 10% increase 
every year for the past couple of years. Hopefully that stays about what it is. I don't know if you guys have, you guys have clearly have got anything back yet. We just done form fire today. Um, 2025 capital improvement plan and operating budget, business continuation plan, 2025 shares contract and the 2025 dispatching agreement, collective bargaining agreement and residential development. So those are their warranty bonds, the performance bond and that subdividers agreement. All that's gonna become the council. Um, any questions on the legislation? If not, I have one more discussion topic that we're gonna to add to. No. And one more thing. I'm gonna let Ms. Harris talk about the donation for Mr. Grimm. Um, I put a donation in there today. Uh, Ms. Harris, I'll let you take it since it's a, your From project. Casual conversation at the last meeting I was at. We um, and Angela did a great job. She copied from the information that was public on on Mr. Graham and then put his picture from council. We had that sitting up at our counter for the last um, 30 days, and we have collected $70 now mm -hmm. with um, donations. And then um, we just got a little bit more. So if anybody wants to donate, this is for the memorial tree. If anybody wants to stop in our office and donate, um, we'll still collect that towards it and then get with his son to see what type of tree and get with Howie on when, when and where we can plant it. But we did start a really nice um, memorial and we've been collecting some walk-ins. Where is council think is an appropriate place to put Mr. Grimm's tree? <coughs> is it going to be a tree matching what's already on the street? On the if, main street? If it's a lilac, it'll be a main street somewhere. But if it's not a lilac, we can put it just about anywhere. And we, it, it, we're not going to, yeah, the only tree that could go on our main street would be the lilac. We don't want to mess that up. Plus the root systems are made for that. So they don't mess up the utility infrastructures. We had discussed putting it in front of Heritage Hall since he was the one that Named came it. up with the name okay. for it. And I did talk to his son and he said any type of flowering tree flowering tree yeah okay i'm sure we can find a spot out front easy peasy well thank you for sitting through that city manager report we appreciate it any questions i'd be happy to entertain and i don't guess we have any committee reports so i guess we go to comments from members of the public <laughs> don't have any public either where can go <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> uh, Matthew Mills, 285 Zeller Drive, New Pearl Isle, Ohio, 45344. I am speaking tonight as the president of the Tecumseh Local Schools Levy Committee. Be quick. Um, we still have two levies on the ballot. They are both no new taxes for existing residents. Um, we could use some help getting the word out. If you have Facebook, I'd like to ask you to go and find our page. It's Vote for Tecumseh Schools on Facebook like and share every post that we do facebook is against us and they are their algorithm is burying us so if you've got a facebook page and you support the the schools i'd ask you to do that um two we are probably going to have a event at evans cattle on the 28th they're having their fall fest if any city council members would like to donate an hour of their time to get put in the dunk tank <laughs> Be more than willing to entertain that. I think that's when is this? Mayor only. <laughs> um, right. September. <laughs> September. The mayor sinks. September. He don't swim. <laughs> and then this is just a, a statement. Um, I'm not speaking as the uh, levy president or the president of the levy committee. Um, I ac had actually approached Mr. Uh, Bridge about this several weeks ago, and I just want to he, he jogged my memory when he was talking. Um, as the city does go through their um, strategic plan for their land use. I think it would be highly recommended or encouraging to involve the school district somehow, whether that just be sitting there to offer some insight or to provide some information. Um, what the city does is gonna impact everybody. Um, we've already given you information about how the developments are gonna impact the, the schools moving forward. So anything that the school district can provide to the council and to the city administration on what something the district the school i'm sorry the city might do 
or might not do and what that impact is, I, I just think it would be a good idea to have a collaborative sharing approach. I know that we can't dictate or, or decide anything, but if we can provide information to help guide the way, I think that would be good. I did speak with Mrs. Crew about that. She, she's on board. Um, so just something to think about. So thank you. Thank you, Matt. Mr. Matt, are you still coming on the 21st? You have a second levy presentation you're, you wanted to do? Probably not. Well, just email me. I have it on my calendar. That's why I wanted okay. to ask. Probably not. I'm so levied out. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. I'll take it off. Nothing's changed. I'm just going to cancel it. Thank you. Yeah. So I don't put it on the. And with that, I guess we'll move to the resolution section. All right. We got resolution 2024-11, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution appointing the city manager as the designee for the City of New Carlisle's mandatory public records training requi required by the Ohio Public Records Act. So moved. Uh, explanation of this, this is not going to prohibit any council member from going ahead and do that training on their own should you want to. It's really just a catch-all. Every year the state of Ohio requires us to pass such resolution if council, has a, if council don't go get the training. I go to it every year because of the resolution. Um, so it is just a catch-all should, you know, uh, God forbid Ms. Eggleston want to do it but then get sick or something, can't go. At least we have that and we're not going to get dinged on our audit. Um, and there is also a section in <coughs> conference if you want to go to Sunshine Training um, to attend there as well. Any further? <clears throat> All right. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? <coughs> yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. All right. Moving on to Ordinance 2024-49. This was introduced on September 3rd. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance approving the Solid Waste Management Plan for the Clark County Solid Waste Management District. So moved. Second. Uh, explanation of this ordinance, um, the committee, I'm, I'm, I'll give a little overview, Mr. Cook, if you want to throw flow on the blanks more, I'm happy to. Um, the committee is required, I do believe, on a mm, every two to three year basis to kind of look at their uh, plan, uh, revisit that plan, and then get local jurisdiction to, to approve that plan as well. Uh, anything past that, Mr. Cook, you want to add to, by all means. This is something that solid waste has to do every so many years, and it involves I guess the word is siting uh, transfer stations, landfills, uh, setting the tipping fees, and any kind of uh, monies needed to run the solid waste district. Uh, I've been involved with many of these, and it's, again, a little bit of boilerplate that normally has to be done and I wholeheartedly recommend that we approve it. Anything further? Mrs. Burner. Okay. The second was right, correct? Shammy, right? Okay. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Speak. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> Pass the 7 0. <laughs> um, the next one is read only. It's and ordinance. public hearing. What? It's read and public hearing. Okay. Introduction and public hearing tonight. Action on 10 21 24. Ordinance 2024-52, creating the Monroe Meadows Tax Increment Financing Incentive Districts, declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation, requiring the owners of those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a <coughs> municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments, requiring the distribution of a portion of those service payments to the Tecumseh Local School District mm -hmm. 
and the Springfield Clark Career Technology Center and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. Mr. Second Mayor. read other business? No. no. I got a second. Okay. Uh, the public hearing portion will start now. Uh, this ordinance will create uh, the TIF for the Monroe, Monroe Meadows and will be acted upon at the 10-21-24 regular session of City Council. We will hold a brief public hearing tonight for any attendees who have questions. I don't think anybody's uh, got I'm count, any I'm, I got a count. I, I got a countdown from a minute. Mm -hmm. We got to give them an opportunity. We're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing because we're doing Thank it formally you. right. Yeah. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I Thank think you. we're good, Mr. Mayor. Thank <clears throat> you. Sorry, Emily. Oh, you're good. I was never done that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got a call Friday about it. So. Okay. Oh, okay. Follow that. <laughs> you want me to go ahead and read the yeah, next little ahead. section? Um, the additional city business, there's an intergovernmental meeting on September 30th at CHS at 6 p.m., and it's open for discussion on city related business. With that, is there anything further? Yes. Go ahead. Um, Per Randy's employment contract, we are to review him annually, and last year's review was uh, not really designed for a city manager. And I've talked to Mr. Bond, and he said that he would be willing to work with me. I've pulled up several samples of different reviews from <clears throat> cities who have a strong city manager and government and i just wanted to make sure that the rest of council was fine with mr bond and i going through and getting the review set up for him sounds good yeah. mm, i don't think uh, anybody would have anything to say against it if i go ahead bill yeah, somebody does <laughs> well council please first then i'll say my say my piece when are, when are you thinking of doing this review? Because that was going to be my question, but she beat me to it. Uh, <laughs> that we need to be doing this review because we are on a timeline and a time crunch, and our schedules for these meetings are pretty full. So I think we need to to possibly set a meeting for executive session only to discuss and review the city manager. Uh, thoughts from council. We'll go ahead, Peg. According to his contract, uh, we need to review him by the end of November. Mm -hmm. So that would give us plenty of time to get something together. What would you think about him doing the executive session next meeting? Uh, let me find my calendar on the 21st. Next meeting, don't we? Oh, I'm in the wrong month again. I think you're next. No, I'm talking about the first meeting in October. Okay. I would not have, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Uh, if providing the vice mayor and Mr. Bond has their information together and, well, and get it emailed out to, to all of us or something prior well, to that so we can. Make what I would like for them to do would be to get together on a final, I don't want to say this, a final form that they choose to use and then get that out to us, um, let's say prior to the end of this month. If they can do that, um, I think at that point we would have no problem in that first meeting in, in October in uh, putting this to bed. I do not have a problem with that if council is good with it and uh, can we work off of a consensus? Do we need a motion? And before I make a motion, Mr. Mayor, the city manager would like to say something. I'm all for being reviewed. That's actually why I put it in my contract that I get a raise if I do not get reviews. It's a merely 3%. I thought I negotiated eight, but clearly it ended up at three, but all good. Um, I think we need to revisit my contract 
before we get into this. Um, I do believe when that contract was approved last year, we should immediately got together and develop some goals because right now I don't know what I'm being reviewed off of. Would it be apropos since I know that uh, Carrie Ann and Kathy do not have copies of this contract for you to email a copy of that contract? I don't and Mr. Shammy doesn't either. So. Sure, but I do want to want council to understand. I don't know what I'm being reviewed off of because there's no goal set at the beginning of the year. The, Mr. Mayor, go ahead, Bill. Uh, try to answer your question, sir. I probably actions, uh, interactions, things that you've done, good. You've done a lot of good for the city. I've, I've always said that since I've been on council. Uh, but on the other hand, you've irritated council members at the same time. So I would say it's probably been just the review would be off your performance. But you're in violation of my contract by not sitting down and developing goals with me. Is that in there? Yep. I'm going to read I'm going to revisit yeah, it. I'm almost remember. positive it was to sit, we were sit down and do, uh, obtain some mutually agree upon goals in order for that to happen. So, I'm, again, I'm not trying to make this difficult by any means, but we do have a contract. That contract was voted on by both parties. So I just want to make sure that we follow that contract. Um, then, <clears throat> then in, on the... executive session at the next meeting instead of the review let's do sit down with the manager and do the what did you call it goals <laughs> well let let's i'll email it out let's everyone revisit the contract because it's been since november since i looked at it so let's start there oh really i just read it last month i think you're a little we're, we're behind the, the uh, curve on the goals and I think that's going to be very hard to do when we're almost through the year of trying to set a goal for him. So why don't we have an executive session, and I'm willing to work with everybody, sit down, have the executive session. You guys want to go first, that's fine. You might want to have Jake at that one, because Jake's your guys' is attorney. And then I'll debate if I need to bring my guy, and then we can all sit down and talk about it. I'm a, like I said, I want to be reviewed. I'm not going to get any better until I hear from each of you what each of you need. I had a great conversation with Ms. Wright. This is why we're getting expanded emails now going to every council member, just except two, you know, or information. So I think we're on a good path. But again, I just, there's no point in having a contract if we're not going to follow the terms of that contract. So again, I want to revisit it, um, but I'm almost positive I remember having that discussion with Jake about having the goals agreed upon because I'm not going to have a council give me these unattainable goals. Um, that are just not attainable. But I do believe the mutual agree upon goals was in that contract. But even regardless of not, I don't know what I'm being reviewed on because I haven't given any goals. When I review my manager every year, we have a, you know, what you did in the past, but this is why I don't want you to work on moving forward. And then we base off that next year's performance. So again, all for it. Just want to make sure it's done in a way that's not going to be detrimental. I am a public employee. Those go in my public folder. And as long as it's done right and accurately and educationally, <clears throat> I'm all for it. Go ahead, Ken. When I worked for the county, we had um, a, a paper that the employee would fill out and say, I, these are the things I feel like I could do better. These are the things I want to you know, personally work on as my goals. And I think if we could incorporate something like that in our mm -hmm. review, least we would have a review I do think that would work I agree with you you should have set goals and I think you just have kind of understandings or ideas of what people think we should do so yeah I think I need to read that and I would like to do that and if I would like to sit down with you because I still want to sit down with you because of the last time when we had the meeting with I've forgotten his name now but at the firehouse that there are some feelings about that and I would still uh, like to you. talk to you about that. That's what I was going to segue to. Like maybe we need to incorporate right. not only this review but the results of that because there's still some hard feelings there I think we need exactly. to kind of talk about and understand because I think some new information has come in since that 
that probably would explain some of those comments, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need to incorporate that into this too. So that, like I said, there's some concerning topics that we should probably look at with that. And that was um, the, the that mission statement. Uh, Councilwoman Grow, you were not part of that. It was done a couple months ago. But we did, we hired a company to come in to do a mission statement. And it kind of led in some other things too. <coughs> did you forward her that? I, mm -hmm. I'm working on the email for her. I told her last week, it's a big email. I got a bunch of documents I'm going to give yeah. her. Yeah, he's already been working on it. Yeah. <laughs> and send it out to us. And uh, Councilwoman Grow already had a good recommendation right off the bat. Uh, she was texting me, we don't have like a new council packet, and I think that's something that we should probably work on. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's okay with council, I would like to work with Ms. Rowe when she has the opportunity to kind of get that together because it's, it's going to make it easier on the new council member. Comp plan can be in there, copy my contract, that vision statement can be in there, um, disaster recovery plan she hasn't seen yet. So there's a lot of documents that if you're coming into this council, you're like, what? what is this? I have some opinions, too, on what to add to Yeah. It. So I would love to work with you on sure. that and maybe a couple other council members. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, it's a difficult thing because when we come in new, we really are very fresh and, mm -hmm. and we want to do well, but we need to know certain things that and then we feel foolish asking them, but, you know, that's yeah. how we learn. Yeah, so, we yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I know. But I'm just saying I think that <laughs> packet, plus us sitting down with you, will really mm -hmm. help start bringing us together and I'd like to see that happen I really would you know I think it's important that we all sit down and talk talking is very important it is and I think council needs to take it like every two years council gets new seats mm -hmm. on sometime in between you get appointments you know and right. it's it's tough I mean and I told Mr. Wright I think Mr. Bond this you know I've had the same council for many years the variation of someone got appointed or someone's relative so we've been able to go very 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 fast pace well we we, we can't do that it's not good for council not good for the people watching on YouTube. It's it's not good for anyone. So we it's need to just stop residents. and smell the roses a little yeah. bit, you know, and kind of pace that out a little bit better. Um, but every two years, every every year, maybe we need to have some sort of open house with council and administration. That newly appointed council members or council members haven't been through your cycle. They come in. You got to see the inner workings of the office with the water stuff. I'm mm -hmm. sure you got a lot of that. I know Vice Mayor Eagleson did as well. So there's a lot of ins and outs that even though council's not directly responsible for. You having understanding of that operation is going to make it easier when we're in these kind of situations, mm -hmm. for sure. So maybe we explore that when we look at that council packet that every year we have an open house for council. Come in, follow me, follow Howie, follow Ms. Harris, just to get an understanding of how these departments work. Because they can be complicated. They truly can. Mm -hmm. If you want to follow Randy, just go to the speedway. He's there all the time. That is a true statement. Not all the time, but I am there a lot. <laughs> So are we going to stick with that October date, the 7th, and do that get together and kind of mush out that? Well, Mr. Bond has um Go ahead. We may need two executive sessions to get this right mm -hmm. um, in that uh, I think because this process is not really defined. Mm -mm. Um, since I've been on council, there hasn't been a, been a really formal review of the city manager. And so we're going to have to kind of learn through this a little bit. But um, so we may need to, the first executive session, talk through the what the vice mayor and I come up with as a format. And um, between now and then we can look at the contract and see if you know if there's goals uh, and objectives that we miss defining um, you know maybe we need to incorporate that in or maybe at this point it's just part of the review mm -hmm. um, for next year you know this is your review for this past year and here are the goals and things objectives for this next year mm -hmm. and and we go that way <coughs> um, but to be fair to mr. bridge it, it is hard to give it a fair assessment uh, without some objectives that were and deliverables that were nailed down. So um, that that would be my thing. Is we probably need to set two executive sessions, mm -hmm. one sure. at the first meeting, and then probably the second meeting we may need to do another executive session <clears throat> and do the there would be kind of like what you were saying, but is 
Mr. Bridge, what you were saying was, do we do a review since we didn't send any goals up for you? Well, I think there'd be something. I just don't know. Because that I think that we will just go review everything and come back together as a group on the seventh. Okay. If you guys want to be part of that, because that's been great for that first one. I can come in for a little bit and then leave. However, you want to do that. Um, what was I going to say? Crap! I just lost. I lost it, Mr. Shammy. I'm sorry. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, that's what it was. We do this all the time, and it is completely okay. Um, we call free lunches. And grad school, when we learn how to run cities, they teach us how to do this. It's called free lunches. Instead of reinventing the wheel in this review for your manager, call another city that has a strong manager form of government. I think you're going to find multiple things. One, you're not going to find a city manager is good A, B, C, D, or E. You're going to find more of a discussional type review where you sit down and you say, hey, these are kind of the goals. These are what you want to work at. Have you got there or not? But most cities are a strong manager form of government. If someone does have a formal form for procedures or something like that, you can probably call some best practice cities. Centerville, Kettering. Um, if you want to go a little smaller, maybe New Lebanon. I know they're, they just had that massive transfer of uh, leadership going on down there. But <clears throat> you might be hard pressed to find a formal document that says city manager strong, ABC, because we're just at this level of employment. It's just more of a discussion type sit down which this is what won't you work for did you meet that goal or not i know you two are busy people i have the assistant it's kind of like helping my assistant work on my review but if you want her to call some cities i can do that for you and then have all the results sent directly to you to email addresses instead of giving it to april that way april can do it during the day when on some downtime and then give you guys whatever examples you want if she finds any could we help you out on that front I mean, I'm, I'm fine with whatever. <clears throat> okay. I don't want to take her away from other stuff she needs to do, but, um, yeah. No, she spends an hour on it. She can make some leeway because she'll probably send out emails to HR departments and stuff like that. Yeah. There's really quite a few examples. I've already looked it up just because mm -hmm. that's the kind of person I am. Yeah, there's tons and tons of very good question and answer sessions that you can write goals on. That, so yeah. that's, that's what I think maybe we should mm -hmm. be aiming towards. Because we have to have an idea what we want to write yeah. our goals on, and, you know. Yeah, and how I've been doing my job, if you guys want to take a look at that comprehensive land use plan, matter of fact, I've already went through it and said this is what I've done to meet this goal. Mm -hmm. That's that's the document I'm doing my job off of. Mm -hmm. So download that comprehensive plan. You're going to find out I'm exceeding every one of those except one. Um, then we'll, that's, that's, the doc, that's the only document I have right now that governs how I do my job. Uh, against the codes and stuff like that. But as far as one that council approved, that's that's really the last one. I just have a question. Um, at the beginning of the year, do you personally set your own goals outside of what is set for you here? Um, I do with my staff, yep. So I, some things I want to work on as a manager. Um, they're not so much goals for the city. They're more goals how I want to manage my staff. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is there a possibility of you sending us that and how you've reached those? Um, I have two different forms. Um, prior, to the, prior to this past year, it was basically A, B, C, D, pretty multiple choice type stuff. This past year, I kind of took a different approach, more of a sit down, let's talk about it. These are my concerns. These are what you're doing great. This is where I think you need to improve. So it's not so much of a, it's more of a discussion. Okay. Uh, but I will send you what I have for sure. Um, those are public documents. I just ask that you keep those amongst yourself. They are reviews for someone. Um, and they are part of personnel files, but they don't go out to the public. Just uh, a summary is fine. No, I'll send you out the actual one. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And they all they all do very well. You send those to all of us? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Neil. The, uh, Mr. Bond said that uh, do a couple of sessions. Instead of spreading them out over a two-week period, what does council think about doing two nights back-to-back? -back? Uh, I don't know what we got. I don't know if we can do it this week. I mean, this month or maybe next week if, if council is available the 24th, 25th, 26th. Or October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. I'm throwing out m multiple dates. Most of them is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, or if you only need 
you know, the, the two days, the 8th and 9th of October, and then, uh, then we have a work session on the 15th of October. Uh, what does council think about any of those dates? And would you want to do a back-to-back -back, uh, session? <coughs> we have to have it out far enough for the clerk to get the legal notice out mm -hmm. that we're doing it, and then open the meeting, go straight to executive session. Go ahead, Kathy. I, I agree that we probably do need to, and I think back-to-back -back would be good. Tension will be high, I believe. I think that's something we're going to expect and appreciate that is the way human beings are. So I think to get it over with would be best. So if we do do two days in a row, maybe it shouldn't be on a, a regular council day because council is this business, yeah. and that executive session should probably be a total separately thing. So Even though so I didn't say we, that well. What if we do executive session on the 7th to just kind of get our ducks in a row? To rows. start it that after we our were, regular council yeah, meeting? Yeah, Peggy and I can bring back what we That would find, be fine, would sure. Recommend. And then the Tuesday then after? The eighth, the Tuesday after, I'm not available. I'm not okay. The, but the ninth, I would be the okay. Wednesday. So we skip that, a day. That would be okay to skip a day, I believe. I, uh, I would be okay if you guys. Did you call that? Excuse me. Sure. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. no yeah, I'm, I'm not fussy. Uh, would that be a that, that day in between a cooling off day for everybody, it, or, or, not. or you just want? Yeah. I mean, I hope it isn't a bash station. Uh, I know. Uh, Personalities clash at times. The uh, the uh, myself, I would like to do it back to back and get it over, get it done, and then move on from there with hopefully a new perspective Forward. and a new understanding on everybody's part instead of busting it up and splitting it. <coughs> and then we have a council meeting on the seventh. Uh, Quite honestly, the seventh is a really busy day for me. I, council meeting is going to be tough for me to make, uh, but I'll be there. Uh, I would, if we're going to do a back-to-back, -back, I would myself looking at my calendar would be the ninth and tenth would be an awesome. It's a Thursday and a, I mean a Wednesday and Thursday of the first full week of October, the week of our council meeting. If Everybody else can make that. We can meet here, I guess, at 6, to, uh, so people can get off work. Sorry to interrupt. Do you guys want Jake at your meeting? Uh, Probably, yes. Uh, so you might want to. Well, it's a pleasure. The only problem I have with all that is I don't know what I have until I get to work in the morning. That's how my job works. Right. So it's, I could have 100 deliveries. <coughs> 180. I don't know. So, could you make still make it by six? I can try. Or six thirty. Can we move yeah. it down to six thirty? Yeah. yeah. Or we can move it to seven. Just bring the FedEx van. Yeah. Just yeah finish bring your rate. deliveries after. Well, if you're having <laughs> just an executive session, <laughs> right? Yeah. But yeah. but he, what he's saying is he may not be here until right. six thirty or seven. So I don't have a problem making it at seven at seven o'clock for the executive <laughs> sessions on right. them two days <laughs> if council's in agreement with that. I am okay with the ninth and tenth. Um, I do have, an, I do have every Tuesday something going on. I mean, I'll be here yeah. when we have, yeah. Yeah. when we have meetings Tuesdays on Tuesdays, obviously. Tuesdays. But um, we already have a couple meetings on yeah. Tuesday of that month. So if we could skip that, that Tuesday, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. So if, if council is agreeable to the ninth and tenth, if we need to do that into a motion, mm -hmm. I, I will move <laughs> that we have. Uh, we, we set an executive session at 7 o'clock to give people time to get off work. Uh, on Wednesday the 9th, Thursday the 10th, for the purpose of discussions with the city manager. I mean, I mean, what a house would I put that, that review? Or yeah, first that's going to be both say a certain be discussions. Do you, can you put a claimer in there depending on if you guys want Jake's availability? Uh, I, I know I don't, I, 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 I can't speak for Jake, but I'm sure it's fine. But I don't anticipate, I mean, it's up to council if they want Jake there. Uh, 
I don't. You should have him for at least one of the two. We probably I think. should have him maybe for the second one. Uh, or even I don't know which council's pleasure, the first one, second one. You want him for both of them? I mean, he isn't doing nothing at seven o'clock at night like that. Oh, we don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know. I think the first one he probably be good to be here if we're talking about the format. Okay. And that kind of thing. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. So if, if, if we need a motion, motion, I'll move to have the executive, executive session with the city attorney on Wednesday the 9th and Thursday the 10th of October. And we will decide that evening on the 9th if we need Jake on the next night, according to his availability, if, he, if he's able. But, but I don't think he would have a problem being here. Was there a motion on the floor? Motion is, is, but is it considered? Who, who did the, we have a second? Who did yeah. the first, Mr. Lindsay? I motion. Who did the second? That was an executive I session for a personnel matter. Is that what? Yeah. It, that's for really not. Employment um, the, city so the work session will just be, because you guys are going to the work session, then you're going to executive session? No, we're going straight to executive session. On well, you have to go, you have to call the meeting to order first. Yes, yes. So it would be a work session agenda, like a normal work okay. session. And then the, on the agenda, it will be executive session to discuss the uh, employment of a public employee. Okay. Work session agenda with no audience participation. And the, yeah, and the, um, I'll let you go through your motion. Sorry. Well, if they want to come to see us open up the meeting, we can't stop that. <laughs> but, they, but they cannot be in the executive session. Well, we don't want to waste our time. Can no. you, can do you, I, I don't even need to add this to the motion or not. That's why I'm interrupting. I do apologize. But I may bring my attorney to these. So I cannot invite people into executive sessions. That has to be approved by council. So I would like permission to bring my attorney if needed. Sure. If I so choose. I, I don't know about council. I have no problem. Uh, because we're going to have our attorney there. I have no problem with you having your attorney there, but it's the pleasure of counsel. I'm fine with it. I'm okay with that. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so with that, I will amend the motion to allow the city manager to be represented by counsel in our executive sessions. Thank you. Uh, both of them or whichever one he decides to attend. I would assume it would be both of them. Or none. I just want the yeah. option. So uh, that that's an amendment. So I need a second on the amendment. Mm -hmm. All right. Councilwoman. Okay, we're voting on the amendment to allow Mr. Bridge. Yes. Legal representation. Count. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Grow. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Sham. Yes. All right. That passes 7 0. And now we're voting to have the um, two work session slash executive session meetings on October 9th and October 10th starting at 7 p.m. Correct? Yes. yes. All right. And the first was Lindsay, the second was Shammy. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes. With seven. that, is there anything else? I, Go ahead, I'm Ken. sorry. I do have something else. And um, what it is, <coughs> is I spoke briefly, actually, me and Ms. Ms. Rose, and um, Oops. Rose? Rose. Ro what did I say? Ro Rose. Bro. It said my Rose middle name. middle name. I'm so sorry. That's what happens when your name is a pun. It's fine. Gosh. <laughs> anyway, this is about Bobo Park, and we have been speaking about parks. And I want to get a committee going for the park, so I really think we need to do that now, especially with the new park coming with paddocks. And I just, you know, I think we need to get on top of that. It's real important to me. And I would like to, however this is done, I'm not sure how it's done, but I don't know if it's a resolution to dedicate Bobo Park as a radio controlled car truck place to play. And I don't think we need to do anything in order for that to happen right now. I don't know if there's rules and regulations that we have to follow. There's parking to the side. 
I would like to make this a very nice park, though, but I want the committee to form and, and help that happen. We have a, a club that's willing to help the city workers keep it clean, keep it taken care of, things like that. So, so basically, start a committee and okay for them to start playing with their little vehicles out there in Bobo Park area where nobody's going to be bothered by the noise and the whatever. So that was my two wishes. It's a really great thing for a lot of folks that like <clears throat> that kind of stuff, and I think I'm going to even like that kind of stuff. We've made, I want a small kids one because, you know, for Christmas you get a little, you know, Batmobile, $39.99 one to ride. So kind of a small track for the little guys. And then a big track and a challenge course and a rock climbing hill. But none of that has to happen today. That can happen with time. And I would like for the club to help us decide what needs to be in there. So I guess, I don't know what I'm asking for, but I'm asking for you guys' help that we could do that. Can we dedicate Bobo Park? As a radio control. Go ahead, Bill. What club are you talking about, Mrs. Wright, to it's, help that it, help uh, keep it clean and whatnot? It's Pick just up. a radio controlled club. There's oh, okay. there's groups okay. all over. Like they go to Delco Park a lot, and, you know, because it's closed yeah. down, and they play on that blacktop area, which isn't a lot of fun because it's pretty flat. And I, I mean, I'm sure it's fun. They'll take it, but it's all they have. So. And I know they've tried to ride on our roads, and that's against the law. We can't have them on our roads. We don't want them on our roads. So I just think it would be a nice thing to offer them. Uh, Anybody else? I have one more question, if I may. Go ahead. To the city manager, I would like your thoughts on, on this idea at, at the moment. Uh, I met with Carrie. Uh, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Grow and Councilwoman Wright. Um, I love the idea um, where it's going to be. Uh, we had figured out it was a pollinator, but that agreement expired, I think, at the beginning of this year, middle of last year. Uh, my only concern, and I voice it to them, is that in the, it's in the floodplain, which we don't know how much it's going to impact or not. Um, and then it's a watershed, so I'm going to, I saw the watershed shine today, actually. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just do some research to see if we can redevelop that area down there. Before we let anyone back there, they can't just park on the grass because then they're a violation right. of our own code at that point in time. But I don't, honestly, I mean, that meeting with them too was great. It was kind of eye-opening because she taught me about nat natural parks. Mm -hmm. And I had, an, I had a vision of what they were, and it was not really what the end result was going to be. So as far as the RCA park, I, as far as location goes, if it's, if it's allowed because it's the watershed, it's a great location. Those cars tend to be loud. I watched a video. They are loud. There is some room down there. Um, so as long as it's feasible, I couldn't think of a better location in town for it to be. <coughs> I just don't know if we can go ahead and dedicate it right now. We can, as far as your committee goes, we're actually working on ordinances to form your committees. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at it in a couple of weeks. Jake's working on it. But was Parks and Rec one of the committees we formed out of the Boards and Commission Handbook? I think so, yeah. Because the, the, the tape was bad, so Emily couldn't do the good minutes on there. So we're still working on that. If not, then we can go ahead and add a Parks and Rec board in, in there because you're going to need some committee to really help guide that. Um, That's what I was thinking. But you honestly, I mean, for a redevelopment of a park, we don't have to cut it anymore. Would you might have to cut it? There probably would por be. portions of it. Yeah, uh, it, but not much of no, it. No, by the time you get yeah. the, the challenge course in there, the little kid thing, right. the monitor, not much. it's yeah. going to take up a lot of that. It truly is. And right now they could park at the side where the ball people park and walk through the back. There's mm. a back that's that's private property and they normally mark that off. Are you talking about across the street? No, I'm not. I'm talking uh, the yeah. ball park yeah. is. That's yeah. private property and they don't want so they, we would, they mark that off. Even if it's that's a city road, it. actually. It is a road, but it, mm -hmm. you can't be, it depends on where there's parking. We can do some short-term fix on it. It's not going to, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to have to take some prep. It's not going to, you know, pass motion happens today. Right. We can do something until we can bring in a typical measurement of a parking spot, bring it in like 10 feet, 10 feet wide, mm -hmm. gravel it for the meantime, and let yeah, people get out and do like that. So sure. that, um, I looked at the, I was down there today, actually, mm -hmm. just based off our meeting. Utility line's kind of low. They kind of lay low a little bit like this, so I don't know if that should be an area of concern, but I'm sure the utility company sees they're, they're dragging. I just don't know if someone has like a, a 
one of those big towers on the back of their antenna cars on the back because they so ham radio people have them. Yeah, they don't that have that big yeah. or that being packed. I don't know. No, I don't um, but we're not gonna have to move any utilities because they can. Mm -hmm. There's enough space between the poles for that to happen. We're antenna you know? this tall. So. Um, like I said, it was a pollinator for the longest time. The city entered into agreement. It expired. Um, right now, it's just a green field. Right. So can we allow them to play now? Give them somewhere off the roads? That would just not be an item for the Probably. budget discussion. Uh, be, I mean, we, don't have, we can't fund it this year. Well, no, I'm not talking about funding anything this year. We might have to make plans for that, right? Well, I mean, yeah, because, well, I mean, we'll... <coughs> I we're at to hire someone to help design this thing <coughs> and then we're to buy the materials for it that's going to take planning mm -hmm. um, you guys can make the moat like I said there's they won't be able to if they go down and put it on the grass that's fine they just can't park down there there's nowhere to park right right but it's it's a park I mean it's no different than taking it to Smith Park and doing it there mm -hmm. would would you need anything from us to look into it, get more information, and bring it back to us. As far as the floodplain, oh, I'll do all that. And stuff I'm already like working that. all that. I'm already working on it. Okay. Thank you. And so maybe you'll have something for us at the next meeting, possibly, or the meeting after, because it's not going to happen this year. Anyway. Oh, I can have it by next meeting. It's not. It's not long, complicated stuff. Okay. It's really not. So I, I don't need a motion, no. Okay. I've, I would just. I'm not trying to take the thunder away from Mrs. Wright. No, I, I don't need a motion fine. for doing the work. If you want to do the motion how she suggested, that's between you guys. But I'm already doing all the background work for him because it is a good idea. Okay. Mr. Bond. Just real quick, and this is going back a discussion as far as your, um, your goals for you, but your contract reads this. Council and manager may periodically develop mutually agreed mm -hmm. upon goals the performance of which will be considered when determining whether the manager has fulfilled such other duties as may be required by council. So may periodically. No, that'd be change the shower for next one. So <laughs> the next um, contract. So critical. we aren't necessarily under contract, I don't think, to have goals. I don't think we're violating that because we didn't come up with goals. So. All right. But what are you what are you what are you proving what are you reviewing me on then? Same stuff we always <laughs> be uh, probably, <laughs> probably based on the the uh, attendance, the, uh, <laughs> vacation, the use plan, the um, ah, comprehensive plan, the plan. comprehensive yeah. plan, and that's probably how you how we interpret you doing your job and interacting with people, interacting with your staff. You know how you manage them. That, but you're right. It 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 leaves it open. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is something I think I would. In my opinion, if I was you, I would have pushed for this earlier on in the year than now. But that's what well, that goes we're, we're, we're here now. So that, you guys could have done the same thing, though, right? We could have. Yeah. We could have. That's but, on both of us. Yeah. But um, like I said, this is something we're going to have to kind of feel our way through here. And I'm, I'm all for it. I just want it to be something that I, I don't like. I said, I don't have a problem being reviewed, but I don't want to be reviewed by people who don't understand my job because then you're just asking for a bad review. I mean, how do you review someone if you don't understand what they're saying? Uh, we're not done yet. Uh, That's not my concern. The, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Go ahead. The, uh, to, to kind of answer your question, Mr. Bond, the council, like the manager said, we could have brought this up earlier. Uh, in my opinion, it's actually the mayor's job to to remind us and bring that to our attention and schedule that. So, uh, but any one of us could bring it up too, and I was going to bring it up tonight. Uh, I'm glad the vice mayor did bring it up because I was going to mention that you know we're on we're getting on uh, what's called crunch time because we have to have it done by a certain date. And, and I believe that date's the end of November, if I remember from the vice mayor's comments. So, just wanted to put that out there. Uh, and if there's nothing else, I'll move it. We adjourn, Mr. Thank mayor. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Groh. Yes. Yes. Councilman. And yes. Seven zero. <sighs>